What's up? What's up? What is up, everybody? Hello, and welcome to Critically Aroused, the podcast where we ask, do we even need film critics? And then we review a movie. My name is Blaine Andrews, and joining me today are my usual co-hosts and heterosexual life mates, Matt Verlack. Hey, everybody. <laughs> and Christopher Kaus. What's up? And yeah, we're back. We're uh, It's been a hot minute since we did this. I, I don't even... A couple weeks. Now, granted, for you guys, it still felt relatively weekly-ish, but... You know, it's been a minute, and actually this week, we are back to attempting to record this thing, and we might be going full-time with doing the video portion of the podcast. So, yeah. Yeah, so if you are uh, watching, then hello, but... <laughs> so anyways, yeah, well, I'm, I'm excited to do this thing, and actually, this week, we're going to be talking about the little things. This is probably, I mean, obviously, we did Wonder Woman recently. This is another in the line of big films finally yeah that are we're coming finally out. getting back to big movies yeah i mean and i was looking so the little things it stars i mean the, the casting on this thing is stupid like it's it's denzel washington and remy malik and jared leto all three of which have won like oscars i mean this is a heavy hitting yep. heavy hitting film and it's directed by uh john lee hancock and i'm i wasn't familiar with his name, but then I looked, and actually, we're all pretty familiar. You're, you're guaranteed to be familiar with at least one of his films, probably. One of which being The Blind Side, which I think like everybody knows uh, about or yeah. has seen. I've heard of it, yeah. Yeah, it's a football movie, and it was a big deal years back. And he did Save Mr. Banks, which I think was about Walt Disney, I think, or something along those lines, if I remember right. I'm not sure. I know I, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, he, he did a film called The Rookie. And recently he did a movie called The Highwayman for oh, the Netflix. Oh, the baseball one, yep, right? Yep, yep, exactly. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. It, like, you're guaranteed to at least know one of this guy's movies. Yeah. Um, he did the one about, it was called The Founder. It was, it was uh, oh, I think, Michael Keaton. And it was a re- fairly recent. It was about the guy that started McDonald's. Hmm. And that was a big Proper. movie. Joe Talk Brock. about an interesting no. change of movies. Right? That's what like I was just all of those movies and then this one on top yeah. of it. Without getting into anything, yeah, like those are such different movies, drastically. Yeah, different. I feel like this is the <clears throat> most different. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Like all those other ones are kind of like family friendly, mm-hmm. happy go yeah. lucky. Exactly, and this is very dark and broody and yeah. murdery and <laughs> 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 well. And the thing what? was, I, I think I saw something about so like after seeing it, obviously we come into movies blind. If you don't know, we don't we usually know not a whole lot about the movies outside of little bits of news that might have dropped or something, and usually that's related to some kind of nerdy stuff that we're into <laughs> if we're like <laughs> keeping up with the news on it. So, but yeah, basically it was saying that he wrote this a really long time ago and it's, I guess the script's just like been sitting forever. Mm-hmm. And so I found that pretty interesting. I think it was on like the IMDb facts about the film or some kind of thing when I was like scrolling through trying to see what the deal was after watching this. Um, but yeah, so anyways, and actually also I will go ahead and say this movie's rated R, so this week, like most of our weeks lately, will be rated R. So <laughs> if it's not G or PG, it's going to be an R-rated episode, which is going to be fun for YouTube. We'll see how that goes. So, because then we have to, yeah, it's more of just we have to, I guess it's like how we label it. So, anyways, whatever. No explicit. Big deal. Yeah, explicit, exactly. So, yeah. But that's what we're going to be talking about this week. I'm excited about it. And since it's been a hot minute, we're uh, definitely going to have a l- I have a little bit of news. I've just decided to filter through a lot of it. I mean, there's been so long. much news I know. since we haven't recorded for a I while. Know. So Exactly. And and basically between that and then we've probably all seen a good bit of stuff. So And I do want to say we were talking about it right before we started. We realized in two days it will be our, our one-year anniversary of the yeah. show. Yeah. Which is awesome. So if you've been Hooray. sticking it out, yeah, right. If you've been sticking it out this long, then you know, thanks. Uh, thank you. Yeah, love yeah. you guys for thanks for listening. And and if you're new, then that's awesome too. Hopefully, we'll be picking up some new people once we get the videos out there. And YouTube just brings so many more clicks because of someone just searching something yeah, simple. Yeah, the algorithm is so random. Exactly. There's no real. Uh, n- there's plenty of podcast formats, but it's hard to just search something like that and. People, I don't think people think to like look in a podcast search and just be like, I want to see a review of the little things, like you know, and see who's talking about it. And right. it's just easy to get lost in that shuffle, I think. So, with the podcast, at least, so we'll see, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, yeah. I'm excited about it. But anyway, so now we'll, uh, I guess we can go ahead and go into the news and we'll talk about that a little bit. So, like I said, I've waited through a lot of stuff. I, I really, th- so there's 
two actual like HBO Max things, I guess, which works well because that's the other thing is that Little Things is an HBO Max release as well. This thing is in theaters, but probably 99% of people are going to see this movie at home. Right. Yep. So, and I actually did notice this one as well is like Dolby surround sound through Dead. HBO Max, 4K, the whole thing. Yep, Dolby Atmos. Yep, exactly. It was nice. Yeah, exactly. That's that's awesome. I got kicked to the bedroom, so I didn't get to see it in all its glory on my good system. So that was kind of a bummer. But, oh, well, you know, you win some, you lose some. So, yeah, but so the thing I was going to talk about, I guess, first, it was fairly recent news, was that they announced that Harry Potter is going to be a TV show. Yeah, well, I, I don't... Spoke to y'all about this whenever we were hanging out the other day. Yeah, so yeah. as far as I know, they actually didn't announce it. From what I've seen, it was, is a rumor that there was a conversation that happened behind doors uh, that they were discussing that, and then somehow that the fact that they were discussing it leaked, and then it was like one news source took it and then everybody's ran, ran with, with it. it, and everyone's like, "It's happening! It's yeah. happening!" I mean, it's but, honestly, it'd be stupid not to happen. I mean, you're right. You're doing it with Star. People are doing it with Star Wars over at Disney. Like, well, they're Wars. showing. Yeah, Lord of the Rings. Like, yeah, they're showing that you can make money. Yeah, off TV shows. Yeah, sure. So, well, and there's so much material left to mine with Harry Potter. Oh yeah, like it's infinite. <laughs> right, they could do so much. I mean, you could go. I mean, the Fantastic Beasts series is a prequel. You could go before all that stuff. Or yeah, you, you could, could go... do a founding, um, founding fathers. Yeah. Of Hogwarts kind of show, yeah. which would be That'd cool, be or I don't know, who knows? There's they, so many there's, things they could do. Yeah, there's a ton of things. Uh, so I mean, I'm I'm pretty excited about this potential, and obviously, it almost guaranteed me an HBO Max show. I yeah, being owned by be. Warner Brothers. Yeah, and both Harry Potter franchise and yeah. HBO Max, both being war- owned by Warner Brothers, it makes sense that it would be. Yeah. On HBO Max. Yeah. yeah. For sure. So I'm sure that'll be the case, and I'm excited. I think there's a lot to mine there. Granted, there's not a whole lot to talk about it yet. It's like, you know, it's all going to be speculation. Yeah, I mean, and even distant, like you said, if distant it's... Distant rumors. So. Right, and if it's not even, like, official yet, then, you know, there's all that, too. Yeah, so. it's going to be years. Yeah, know, potentially, Coming up with scripts sure. and story and yep. casting and filming and... Right, and I mean, we've still not even... <laughs> we've still not even gotten a third fantastic beef um yet. i think it's that's supposed to be this fantastic this... beef Fan... yeah the fantastic yeah. beef <laughs> you, you remember those movies the fantastic beef yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah, was what they were originally going to call that one they were going to call that mcdonald's movie that oh. but then they realized oh. it wasn't that fantastic oh. <laughs> and so they had to change it to the founder so <laughs> but yeah i don't know yeah i just kind of wanted to bring it up i thought it was interesting news and yeah Something some, somewhat related to that because you brought up Fantastic Beef. Um, <laughs> I saw something about uh, Johnny Depp that he was he won his lawsuit or something like that. So they brought him back. No, oh, did they? I, something I, like I can't remember re- the details. recently. Yeah, it was like within the past few days. Oh, really? Or maybe yeah. Oh, I had not so heard maybe that. he won another lawsuit or something because I knew he lost the one. And then I mean, so whole... he lost like the whole. I guess it was his divorce. That he, he more or less lost. <laughs> They're still married. Yeah, <laughs> against his wishes. Well, no, it's just that like. She, I guess she won the lawsuits against him, I guess is what it is. Oh. Okay. So that literally was the reason why he got canned from Fantastic Beasts, and they have pulled him from all those things. Yeah. Disney essentially canceled their contract with him, too, I think. For the... Right, for Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. So, I mean, it would make sense for him to counter sue because mm-hmm. that's ridiculous. Right. But... I didn't actually read it because I don't read the nude. I just saw it. Somebody had posted it somewhere yeah. about it. So. Uh, some of that fast news. Right. Yeah. I just scrolled yeah. by and I was like, oh, good for him. Yeah. yeah. It's probably not real because <laughs> as far as I know, I haven't seen yeah, that. Yeah, last okay. I heard. Yeah, so. I don't know. I haven't. And that'd be, that'd be on, that'd be big headlines. <clears throat> well, they made such a big deal about her winning that one lawsuit, which mm-hmm. it sounded like the whole thing was such a mess that it's hard to even keep up with. And... Well, yeah, because she got canceled yeah. from Aquaman, but then they, they went back on back. that. They were like, oh, well, never mind. We're, we're going to bring you back. Well, that's so. the thing is, like, he has his, They both have relationships with WB. So yeah. it was like they were both in the same, like, with the same studio. So one of them was going to end up getting screwed over. Potentially. I mean, Potentially. they could have. They could have kept them both, which yeah. I think you should. It's do. not like they're going to be on the same set at any point. Yeah. So uh, somebody made, like, a deep fake. But they were like, oh, they're they're going to replace Amber Heard, Heard? is that her yeah, name? Yeah. Mm. With Johnny Depp. And they just like had his <laughs> face on her for all the movies that she's seen. That's oh, amazing. It was great. I'd watch it. 
I mean, he can do anything. He's a magic man. He is. I mean, you know, so. A magic man. <laughs> but the, so <laughs> the other thing I was going to talk about, real kind of quick news, was I did see that, I guess, you know, uh, Wonder Woman 1984 came out. We reviewed it last week. If you've listened to that review, then you know our opinions were not. We the, loved it. <laughs> right. Yeah, they weren't the same opinions we have about the first Wonder Woman movie. We'll put it that way. Correct. So, uh, but apparently the, uh, their, the HBO Max subscriber numbers doubled with, with the right here at the end of the year when Wonder Woman came out. Mm-hmm. So their subscription numbers. Doubled? Yes, they doubled. I wonder how many of those were free trials. Yeah. Just I so mean, they could be to watch them. Yeah. You know, or watch but them. I mean, I'm sure they count on people signing up, doing a free right. trial and either being too lazy to cancel it or saying, Oh, look at all this content that sure. I want to watch. Right. Cause there's so much around. There. We've talked about it. Like we're all yep. pretty, pretty hot on the, the service in general and yeah. the thing is if you uh like so wonder woman just came out and now we're sitting here the little things have come out i'm pretty sure either next week or the following there's another movie coming out like we're at a place where hbo max is having theater level releases like every couple weeks. well and that's because they said they're releasing like what, was like seven movies. or eight movies at least i think it's more than that this year they're yeah. supposed to be in theaters on hbo max oh, yeah. for sure so wasn't that WB that said all their movies? Yeah, well, yeah. And that's that's HBO. Well, I don't know if they said right. all of them, but I know they said a lot of them. Yeah, it's basically, it's almost all of them. There was a few that were contentious, mm-hmm. and like Godzilla was one of them, but now that sounds like it's going, because it was like none of them were planned to release that way, so if they had deals with other production companies and stuff, then it got a little dicey. So yeah, it sounds like they're working out deals to pay you know, these different studios that they're tied in with and that kind of mm-hmm. thing, and actors and whatever, so... I think they've got it all worked out because, and I guess recently, I didn't, obviously we don't really watch trailers and stuff, but a new trailer dropped for... I heard about that. Godzilla. I haven't seen it. Yeah, I haven't either. It's taken every like bit of me not to. But... Oh, I know. <laughs> I saw a couple seconds of it and that was about it. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see anything. I so, saw some screenshots on yeah. IGN, I guess. It looks cool. I'm excited. I mean, I'm... No, I mean, oh, I was, I like I'm excited stuff. from the last movie. Yeah, exactly. So, so. Still haven't seen that one. What? You did? Uh, it's on HBO Max. You Actually, watch it. I mean, mm-hmm. it's... It's a fun rob. It is on HBO Max. Like, it's, it's got a bunch of like other. Like, oh yeah, it's got Mothra. And oh, it has yeah. like all of them, quite except King Kong. Well, and there's and not Mega, Mecha Godzilla, and so there's a couple that are missing, but yeah. it has yeah. like five good. or six of them. Right. Yeah, different monsters. Fedora, I think. Yeah, maybe. yeah, there were quite a few. Fedora. Godora. Yes, the Fedora. It's the flying, the flying the Fedora. <laughs> it's the brim. It just goes... <laughs> <laughs> and you hear, like, jazz when it comes flying up. <laughs> His hat just floating it's along. A beard. <laughs> and then it just lands on Godzilla's head. He's wearing it. Like, <laughs> I don't watch it. You know? That's yeah. how it takes control of people by landing on them yeah. like that. This is the real Pacific Rim sequel that we need. Like... <laughs> That's their secret weapon. They have yeah. it, like, and they launch it. Like, after they've used their swords and everything, and they yeah. can't defeat a monster. They're like, Fedora. all right, in the fedora <laughs> <laughs> and it lands <laughs> amazing I mean, I this it. is like pacific rim 12 yeah yeah where they've ran out of ideas oh, God. they're already there maybe that's what this new what? pacific rim anime will be so <laughs> maybe <laughs> knowing how anime could yeah. be it's possible so right. but the other thing so this is the other the biggest bit of news honestly that i felt was that dropped since we've kind of been on our little two-week hiatus um I don't know if you guys saw this. I'm guessing Matt probably did, but it's the new y'all holding hands over there. <laughs> yeah, you. Uh, man, you're hot. That uh, the girl I know. for that new Borderlands movie they're making. Did you see the news? Mm, maybe. There's one more bit of casting news that just dropped. What's her name from Game of Thrones? Right. No. Well, ma- oh yes, I think she was announced possibly as being in it. No, the bigger news was that Kevin Hart is officially cast. Oh. Oh, I did see that. Yeah, Kevin Hart is going to be... Oh, he's Claptrap. <laughs> no, yeah, he would be a good Claptrap. No, uh, he's playing... It's Roland, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, from the first Roland game. Roland is yeah. so big. Yeah, he's it like a Jack. big what? soldier dude. Yeah. What are they going to do? Yeah, I have Steroids. no idea. Steroids. But he is kind of short, isn't he? I think he's like really jacked yeah, but and he's short. Like short and stocky, which I mean, it's fine. You're not going to have... You're not going to yeah. be able to like... Well, they've already announced like Kate cast Blanchett everybody. is in it as well, All right? Yeah. Well, that's the thing is that, yeah, she is. She is um, the uh, the Phoenix, isn't they she? They think, She's... yeah. I think. I don't know that it's been officially announced. Maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah, Who's Handsome Jack? Oh, she is Lilith. She's going to be Lilith. Lilith. I don't think H- Handsome Jack is the second game, so they're probably I thought just... he was in all of them. Mm-mm. He it's wasn't so in the first one. so long since I played the first one. I don't think he was in the first one. Pretty sure he wasn't. I think he was like the villain. 
of he the, is the villain in the, the second one or the second yeah. game yeah i thought he was in the first one i don't know i'd have to go back it's and look long, long but time. if he is they haven't announced him for being in this movie but so she's gonna be lilith and then we've got uh you know him being roland so there's about i just hope two or it's three on the same characters. level as a uh, monster hunter yeah yeah because after like seeing monster hunter thinking like twice. what they could do yeah, twice twist <laughs> what they could do with just like because you they take out all the cgi for like all most of the monsters yeah that could be pretty sweet yeah i think it you could know? be pretty rad and i mean yeah. eli roth is who's doing it he's actually directing it i think like he's a, he's a good director. yeah he's a solid director apparently randy pitchford from gearbox who's like known for starting this franchise and everything is also attached to the film so you've got somebody who cares about it like so there's a lot of potential with this thing and being that kevin's on it like i feel like he wouldn't have just come in on this if it was not a good pitch like, yeah so i'm very very curious to see yeah i can't wait to like hear more about it yeah i, I i'm excited about it too i hope i wonder if this is a little interjection i hope the listeners aren't getting the popping that i'm getting are you hearing i'm too? getting some crackling yeah we're getting a little weird audio this week so i don't know what's going on we might have to fiddle so, with stuff yeah sorry if you guys are hearing a little Lame. like yeah crackling i know right oh well well hopefully it, it won't pass through too bad i'll but... stop eating my rice christmas <laughs> God, thanks right so uh, but they all know you're lying <laughs> yeah exactly yeah you're on you're on video now so well uh basically that was it that was the main things i was really okay. going to touch on uh there wasn't a whole lot do you have I something? Just something real quick really quick yeah uh that allison told me about last night that yeah. they're Netflix is bringing a uh, Sandman series. Oh yeah! So like, oh, that's comic. what she was actually filmed, cast in. Um, yeah, Brienne of Tarth. Brienne of oh, Tarth, you're right. Yeah, is cast in name, Sandman. Her actual name, uh, is Christine. Uh, that's not right. Uh, I don't know. I'm terrible. Yeah, at I'm always in a human encyclopedia for all of this info. But the second that we get on this podcast, I don't remember <laughs> anything. So the second I walk out of here, I'll remember it. So yeah, her and uh, Charles Dance. So that's yeah, it. yeah. She's actually really playing the this. devil. Yeah, I did see that. She's playing Lucifer. Yeah. So, yeah. It's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah. I thought it was going to be an animated thing, and when I saw it was going to be live action, I'm like, oh. Like, oh, yeah. And I think it's a show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to get, you know, eight to ten episodes, mm-hmm. hopefully an hour each. Mm-hmm. Ah, I did see some it. news drop today, apparently, on some podcast. Somebody outed this, but apparently Netflix was making a live action Zelda, and when it was going on uh they were like fully in production and everything and someone leaked that it was being made and nintendo pulled the plug on the whole thing just Why? because news leaked about it being made that's so ridiculous how it's much money like did they lose know, there it's such a nintendo thing yeah. and apparently they were doing that and they teamed up with some other i can't one of the comedy online sites like college humor or somebody mm-hmm. and they were doing a claymation Star Fox show and they pulled the plug on that too because both leaked but like they've already wasted so much money right? setting it up yeah that it doesn't make sense it's, for them just to be like oh we're that petty that's nintendo somebody man. leaked it yeah. that's, that's petty nintendo. ass it, shit yeah <laughs> it really like i but that's how nintendo is so touchy man like they are so protective about their intellectual property like anybody yeah. knowing about anything secrets got to stay secrets you do like, like special deals with people n- like, no yeah it's yeah. they they don't they don't nintendo don't play no games no so anyways yeah that was the main bits of news though so yeah. if y'all want to we can uh, we can move on over into what's new with you, and I'm gonna drop a mouse. And <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we can go ahead and talk about what oh, we've wait, been wait. watching lately. One other thing that just occurred to me: uh-huh. they think it's been leaked the Matrix Four's title. Oh, I did see that. And so this was they sent a present to somebody that was part of the production cast, yeah, it and it had the name on it. And they think it's going to be called Matrix Resurrection. Yep. Is it a Resurrections? Resurrections. I think. Hmm. It was written, like, I saw the jacket, actually. I saw the video that the lady posted. It was, like, a makeup artist for the film. Yeah. Yeah. Or a hairdresser or something along those lines. And they sent her a jacket, and the, it was, like, a trench coat, a black trench coat, obviously, because it's the Matrix. Right. Yeah. And Which makes I would me only happy. wear they better everywhere. Be going back. We right. better get that well, whole th- style back. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to talk about that later. Yeah. Not that, but just something okay. kind of involved with style. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, yeah, so basically on the entire interior of the jacket it was like that matrix code that green code yep and it, and it said right down the middle in weird like code writing it said resurrection or resurrections or whatever the case was so which makes sense cool like news too. if you think about it story-wise that kind of hints of what they might be doing with the movie but it yeah. also kind of would make sense yeah that that's what they're gonna do yeah 
Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see, and and I think that's coming out this year on HBO Max. I think so too. I think it's so, supposed to be the end of this year. That's another one we'll have to get up and put it on the big screen with the the Dolby surround sound. Man, I'm going to the theaters for that. Shoot. Oh, that's true. Well, if it's yeah. in theaters, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I'm so used to like in my head, I'm just like theaters aren't real anymore. Like, <laughs> <laughs> get out of that mindset, right? I know. Let's no go to kidding. the theater. No kidding. <laughs> So, anyways, yeah, let's go on and move yeah. into what's new with you. Yeah. Um, I'm sure we've all got quite a bit. I'm going to kind of try and blast through my stuff. I don't know if one of you guys want to go first. Um, yeah, I'll go saying? first. I have yeah. a couple things. I'm okay. not going to do everything. Yeah. But I might do some, I'm gonna do some stuff I don't think you've seen. Okay. Um, so, most of this is this is all on Netflix. So everything I'm about to talk about has been on Netflix. Okay. Uh, season three of Disenchantment came out. Yeah. Um, Disenchantment is one of the new shows created by Matt Croning. Uh, who, Simpsons, right? Simpsons, Futurama, who, do, for anybody who doesn't know, um, this takes place in like a magical kingdom and it follows a crude princess on her adventures. Um, and it looks exactly like The Simpsons, pretty much. I right? mean, it's like, basically, yeah, exactly like The Simpsons and Futurama. Same art style, yep. Yeah, yeah. it's the exact same art style and they use a lot of like the same designs for the characters and things like that. Uh, it was pretty good. It's not Futurama, which is one of yeah. my favorite shows. And it's not The Simpsons. This, this, this show is much more chronological. It's not yeah. one-off episodes. So every episode like, is a story building. And I'm not the biggest fan of the cast, so I, I'm just kind of like, eh, about yeah. the show in general. But okay. I'll let everybody like make up yeah, their own so mind Yeah, so you've been watching one. it too? Yeah, I watched it as well. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's still fun. Like, I still like liked watching it but there was plenty of times where i found myself drifting yeah 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 so. even the second season wasn't i don't know i feel like each the... season's gotten better i felt oh really yeah but even then they're still just kind of it's just eh. yeah i'd it's rather they bad. bring back futurama but yeah yeah it just never grabbed me so i hadn't watched any of it it just didn't and i didn't it wasn't like people were like screaming from the rooftops about it so yeah i've never heard anybody yeah. talk about it yeah me neither. like xena and i've talked but... about it and that's about it. Yeah. I don't think her family even watches it, and they, like, love The Simpsons. So. Yeah. Um, next is Outside the Wire, which is a new Netflix movie starring um, Anthony... Anthony Mackie. Mackie. Yeah. And somebody else. I can't remember his name right now. I can look it up but real quick. But it was... This is an awesome movie. Like, this was something we almost, like, could have reviewed. Um, the premise is really awesome. It's like a future war and a drone pilot... Ignores command and ends up bombing something that gets a couple Marines killed. But he saves a bunch of Marines, but he ends up getting in trouble. And they're like, you know what? You've been behind a screen too long. We're going to send you to the front line. And uh, somebody specific has requested you. And so he goes and ends up getting on the front lines with Anthony Mackey, who is now his, like, his instructor. And they're like off trying to stop a war. I don't want to say too much because yeah. there's like a lot of spoilers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're well, in I know, I know, I know. I'm trying to be vague because there are a lot of things <laughs> that get spoiled. So I'm trying not to be like too much. But it's a war movie. It's a futuristic war movie, basically, where they use a lot of robots that look like the um, Chappie. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of like androids. Yeah, kind of running around with soldiers. I mean, it's cool. It's a cool concept, and it's a cool movie. The other actor's name is uh, Damson Idris. By yeah, the way. and he's actually the main character. Okay, he's the one that they're following that has to make all these decisions. Huh? I would recommend it. Uh, I know my parents watched it, and my dad was like, "I fucking love this movie." <laughs> nice. Okay. So yeah. I hadn't, I, I hadn't really. Obviously, we don't look at a lot of reviews and stuff. Which, granted, I do more if it's something that I know we're not going to review. But which, yeah, I, I want to see him in something that I like again because after he oh, ruined, he was good in this one. No, yeah. the literally, I kept comparing it to Alter Carbon, I know, and I was like, like, he's so much better in this. Like, why was he so bad in Alter Carbon? Because like, he was trying happened? to act like um Joel Kinnaman. Joel Kinnaman. Yeah, trying to act like. <laughs> the other guy <laughs> to catch a Kovac yeah because Joel dude playing the dude pretending to be him <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly that's the thing. Joel didn't have to like act like pretend yeah he just embodied it yeah and then Anthony had to try to embody it yeah and that's too. where the trend that's where the it was lost yeah it did it, it definitely got lost in translation there so that was that was outside the wire on Netflix yep okay uh, the next thing is <laughs> Uh -huh. Xena started it and I was like oh, watch it I know where this is going it's called Fate the Winx Saga <laughs> and it was really good 
It was basically like Man. Harry Potter meets True Blood, but with fairies. So it's yeah. about like this girl who is a fairy, a fay, fairy, and she goes to this alternative world where there's a fairy school where she can use to learn her powers. But there is creatures called the um, the burned ones. Okay. That are like, if they scratch you, you turn into one. Yeah. And so they are like, I don't know. They're actually really cool looking. They're oh. all like these eight foot tall humanoid things that are completely like charred. Huh. And they are super. They almost were like if you took a werewolf and burnt the skin off of it, hmm. like how it moved because mm-hmm. it was like jumping from tree to tree, very animal like. Yeah, yeah. And so it's the burned one trying to like hunt and kill these fairies. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So this is based off of like a, either like an anime or a. I don't know book what series. it's based uh, off of. I didn't look into it. They at were all. like toys and stuff. I, I know. Like, I'm, I'm guessing it's a book series. I, I, I'm. It. I know my sisters are in it, which they're big into books. Yeah. So that could be it, or, or it could also be have been like an anime or something, a cartoon. Like I know that it was one of those because I remember my sisters being into it when they were kids. Mm. And so this is like the grown up, like you know. Oh, okay. Version. Well, I mean, I'm. So- it is good. I mean, it is basically like a a teenage drama. I mean, it's all because they're in, they're in high school, so it's all this like teenage yeah. drama going on. Sure, but it's cool because like each fairy has like their own abilities. It's not like they all have the same mm-hmm. thing going on. They're just all magicy. Yeah, but they're also so it's like you go to the school and you're either a fairy or a specialist. Mm-hmm. And specialists are weapon specialists, so they're here training like Krav Maga and oh. like sword combat and things like that. And then the way they fight the burn ones is a specialist and a fairy team up. Okay. And so the specialist gets up and close, and the fairy sits back and uses their ability, which is like fire, water, earth. Each one specializes. So they have all these specialties. That's where I was like, it actually is pretty good. And the fighting was actually good in it. Nice. So, nice. yeah, it hooked me, and I watched the whole thing. Now that, <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, that's that's uh, Fate, the Winx Saga. Yep. Okay. Um, On Netflix. Next thing is Blown Away Season 2. Blown away, which is a glass one. blowing competition. Oh, oh, that one. Okay, yeah, it was it really good. Gets me with the title. I know. That's where I was like, I have to specify what this is. Yeah, it it was very enjoyable, and it's just very relaxing and kind of fun to watch them make these really intense giant glass sculptures yeah. that are like whimsical and artistic and cool. Yeah, I remember another you thing on Netflix. One. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. I'll leave it at that. Okay. That nice. is it for me. You want me to go, Chris, or you want to do it? Mine's always stuff? quick, but you can go ahead. No, it's fine. You've already got your stuff pulled up, so you okay. go ahead. Um, <clears throat> when I think that, Matt, especially you'll like, I watched uh, Shin Godzilla, which uh, is a, a foreign-made oh, Godzilla. I heard about this when it came out. I have not. I've it, heard about it, but I haven't watched uh, it. HBO Nothing. Max or something? Oh, it's not anywhere? Yeah. That's the problem. It's Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's on, like, this... Oh, what's that one? It's, like... Four letters. I can't remember. It's something. Fubu TV or something like that. Yeah, it's mm. one of those like random options. I just did not pirate it. <laughs> you, you just found it on the walking down the, Yeah, you were walking down the street. You tripped yeah. over a yeah. DVD, and then you found a DVD player in a dumpster because you didn't have one at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's exactly how it went out. It's like you were there. Yeah, I, I, he he actually like lured you. It was yeah. a trap he set for you. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> that was me. I I left the breadcrumbs. Uh, those breadcrumbs you I followed on the way to the DVD. Oh. Those that weren't just random weakness. breadcrumbs. Yeah, <laughs> my weakness of eating breadcrumbs. <laughs> <laughs> um but it okay like overall the movie is not great so i can't recommend it to everybody okay but like and i really wish i could have seen this in like a higher depth than the terrible DVD yeah that's the problem with dvds <laughs> but know. even with yeah. the terrible like graininess sure it, like the best city destruction in like i really liked like really? the actual like action part of it yeah they just spend entirely too much time on like the people uh, yeah it's like so that is a, that's the classic and and like, godzilla though. if you ever go back yeah. and watch the older godzillas that's it's how they were 80 percent humans discussing it yeah. and like 20 percent monster if not less yeah. yeah that's pretty much how this so if you go into expecting that just know that like fine. most of it's gonna be like a snooze fest bureaucracy mm-hmm. but like the actual monster like the actual godzilla and like the destruction that mm-hmm. it yeah it's really good 
Yeah, right, remember when really it came good. out? It came out right after like the American Godzilla reboot. I think it was 2016. Yeah, I, I think remember. it was like Somewhere 2014 around. was when the American Godzilla came out, and the American Godzilla they made him like really fat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they then, got him like thick boy Godzilla. Yeah, or whatever. Really. and then this one came out, and the Godzilla looks ten times cooler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it and it was like more of like ass. an original looking one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other than that, I did watch Miracle Workers. You did? Yeah. And nice. That's awesome. Really I'm so excited. It. So you liked it? Yeah. Ah, yeah. yes. That makes me so happy. Yeah. If you haven't been listening, I've talked about it for multiple weeks. It's on HBO Max. It was a TBS show or yep. something yep, like that. It was. Yeah. So have you been watching it, Matt? We actually did start it. I just completely forgot because Xena started it. And Xena does this thing where she'll start something, get like three or four episodes in, and then forget about it. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So... Yeah, it's something where I, I kind of watched it with her, and then I went and did something, and I came back, and then I forgot about it also. Yeah. But then she wasn't like, oh, let's keep watching it. And so that just kind of... Yeah, it's so easy to just, like, blast through it. Oh, yeah. Like, they're so bite-sized, sure. yeah. and every episode... Now, I didn't think it was like, that funny, though. You didn't? Like, we were well, watching the, the, it, and... You haven't seen season two, though. Right. For well, me, that's where I was like, I want to get to season two. How did you feel, feel about season two versus... I definitely wasn't, like cackling about it that's the really? one you were talking about the last yeah time god it made like, me laugh so much like yeah i mean huh eh. i mean it was funny like they had yeah. funny parts in it but it i definitely was not i don't i maybe laughed out loud like twice oh really yeah. okay yeah because that's season one was like you know little bits here and there but it's still just like very good yeah. but for me season two like i was laughing out loud like every episode yeah like and i've seen season two twice now maybe yeah. three times really yes Jeez. i've seen it multiple wow. times like that's how much i like it like i yeah. really like season two huh. um which kind of makes me want to go back and watch season one because i watched it so fast because they were doing like a free trial before it was on hbo max right and so i blew through it in like two days or something so yeah. um i barely even remember season one Gotcha. But, gotcha. Yeah. I mean, if you got HBO Max, check it out. Yeah. Yeah, I do recommend it. It is good. I enjoy it. Yeah. Um, and, and it's got Daniel Radcliffe, if you're right. a yeah. Harry Potter fan. And, and, and Steve, Steve Buscemi. Buscemi. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also watched The Tax Collector. Oh, you saw oh, it? Yeah. Okay. Nice. I keep meaning to watch to it. Review we were going to review it, but then, I mean, we could technically do it next week, which you'd have to have wait to a while. About it. it depends on if you want to do it. I don't know of anything right now that for next week. Well, we could. What do you think? You want to put I'll just, it? I'll save it. Save it, and if we'll talk about else, it next week. I can. I can just talk about my thoughts on it next yeah. week. Yeah. Um, okay. And then I watched Terminal. Ter uh, uh, yes. With Margot Robbie. Yeah, yeah. And I've been wanting to see that. It's on Hulu. Yeah. Hmm. So, or is it on Hulu? It was on Hulu. I don't know if it okay. still is. I've been it might be on Amazon bunch. or somewhere. But... I think it was Hulu. Um, it's good. It's got a, a very Guy Ritchie feel. Um, mm. Hmm. Not as high quality and not as jumpy aroundy. Yeah. But still has that feel. Uh, it's got a decent twist, not to spoil anything, but it is somewhat fairly predictable. Uh, so, okay. okay. I mean, you get to see Margot Robbie pole dancing. So... Uh, I mean, that in itself well... is, you know. I don't know. She's not as hot as everyone really? makes her out to be. What? All right. Yeah, everyone makes her out to be like this total goddess. And I'm just like, eh, I mean, she's all right. I think it's. Like, more of, like, I feel like she's a, just a really cool chick. Yeah, like, yeah. I would just want to hang out with her. She, yeah, she's awesome. And that makes her more attractive to me. Of course, yeah. But, anyway. She does seem very cool. Oh, and Mike Myers is in it. What? <laughs> what? Say what? Yeah, I didn't even know that he was still alive. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it was good. I and Simon Pegg? It. Yep, Simon Pegg. Hmm. I'd yeah, that was... Check it out. Yeah, it, it seems interesting, so... Decent, like, mystery, twisty... Okay. Fun. Cool. Yeah. Nice. But, uh, yeah, that'll be it. Okay. Nice. So I'll run through mine real quick. There's already some things I've decided not to talk about just because I like, with it being so long, like I've yeah. I finally quit like playing all the video games I've been playing and <laughs> beat Cyberpunk. Buckle down so and like, watch things. Right. Yeah. I'm actually like watching stuff again. So uh, the, I guess the big one that I've been watching right now is I've gone back to American Gods. Um, okay. Oh, nice. Chris and I watched season one way back before we even did the podcast and really loved season one. I watched like two episodes of season two Insane. and it just, I fell off. Insane. Yeah. And so now I was like, you know what? I, because they, so they've been pushing, they've been advertising the ever loving crap out of season three, which just started. I think they're four or five episodes in now. I think I have seen a good and bit so, of advertising for it too. So, um, anyways, uh, I, I've gone back into it and I'm, 
actually fully caught up now. So I watched all of season two, uh, or well, started where I left off after like two episodes, and I'm on. I've, I'm cur- up to date on season three, and I'll say this: so th- this show, first off, it's on stars, mm-hmm. um, and it's based off the Neil G- Gaiman book series, which is basically the premise is like, what if all gods are real, basically. And and it's just such an interesting, really cool concept that I just love. And h- how they get into how this could work and basically, like, us as humans bringing gods into existence by our belief in these things. And right. then us having to keep the... If, if, if we stop believing, they stop existing. Therefore, they stop doing their acts. Hmm. And so it's a really cool premise. Yeah. But season two, it just it it had a different vibe. It actually ended up having a different show showrunner. Season three has an even different showrunner. Like this show has been in more turmoil than almost any show I've ever seen. Really, it, it is just con- it is just down to like actors and everything. The show seems to just always be a shit show, and mm-hmm. as far as production goes, yeah. because initially the show was being made by the creator of Hannibal. Mm-hmm. And pushing daisies, and then he fell off before the first evening even started filming, even though he created it. So it's just like it's so wild. The show's just such a weird thing. So long story short, season two is okay. It actually ended up making me actively mad for a bit. <laughs> it uh, it got really heavy into some SJW stuff, and it just pushed it so hard. Some of these themes and just some of these race elements and. Which is just, like, it doesn't work for me in the show because this show has one of the, the most diverse casts of any show I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Right. And, I mean, the lead actor is a black man. Like, there's plenty of black actors. There's Middle Eastern actors. There's Asian actors. There's people from all over. And so it just, like, when you're pushing these themes and you're trying to make these points, I'm just like, it, it just, I, I don't know. It just didn't sit right with me. I wonder if it's the same in the book. I don't the know. Books. I, I kind of want to read it. I think it's actually just one book. Oh, um, it's a big book. I have it. I know. Yeah, I, I've debated on reading it, and I like his books. So, mm-hmm. but it just it it really got pushy for me for about two episodes there, and it rubbed me just really the wrong way. But I was like, I'm hanging it out. I like this show. I'm mm-hmm. gonna just like stick in there. And so I'll say this: season three is a huge turn, and it almost feels like by a different. Like, well, it is a different showrunner. It feels totally different. And I'm loving season three. There's a little bit of the race stuff here and there, but, like, they're not pushing it in this heavy-handed way. Because I'm like, there's a way to handle this tactfully. My feeling for season two was it was not tactful. It was forceful. They're just, like, beating you over the head with it. Mm. And that was my issue. And so season three, it's not as much like that. And my other issue was just that Shadow Moon, the main character, was kind of a nothing burger for the first two seasons. He's more of like an analog. He's Mm -hmm. just like this person who's floating through all of these events. And this season in season three, he's great. And he's killing Mm -hmm. it. So I don't want to go too long with it on this thing, but I'll just say like I know with it being on stars and stuff, it's like you... It's it's like if you're not subscribed to it, unless yeah, you, hear you have to like positive. go out of your way to do right. it. Right. So I'd just say like it is very good now in season three, and season two wasn't bad. It just wasn't as good as this season or season one. Nice. So yeah, but anyways, and I, I can if you want to check it out, Chris, since you, I'll give you my stuff because it's yeah. it's worth watching and getting back into. So I've been digging, especially season three. Nice. So anyways, but yeah, that was that was the main thing that I've been like catching back up on the past like mm-hmm. week or so. The other thing pop in on really quick and mention is a show called Infinity Train. You guys might have seen this on HBO Max. It's on like my to watch list or whatever on my HBO Max, but it's an animated show. Yeah, it was on Cartoon Network. Every episode is only like twelve minutes. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's an animated show and it is just really cool. It's a really neat show. It's about a young girl who basically ends up getting on this magical train and it's the infinity train and she's trapped on this thing. And every cart of the train is basically its own like world. And every train is every train car is different. And so like, you know, she's basically trying to get off the train Mm -hmm. Because apparently now that she's on the train, it's traveling through some other universe. It's this wild concept. Interesting. It's really neat. Wasn't this in an episode of Rick and Morty? It kind of it was actually. It yeah, was, they're, they're in the of. train cart. There was a, a but a train. Oh, yeah. It wasn't quite the same as this, but yeah, like because there's like just for an example, like one of the worlds is literally nothing but talking corgis. Like and corgis <laughs> run the world. Like, but then there's another one, and it's almost like a random train car that is just filled entirely with like ducks or something. Like, 
Hmm. And so she's passing through multiple of these every episode, and yeah. it's really neat. I'm like four in. They're like 12 minutes. I like it a lot. And it's on HBO Max. Yeah. It's And it like rides that line between like kids cartoon and adults cartoon, mm-hmm. which is a good mm-hmm. place to be. Like it's right. not like a quote unquote adult cartoon though. Right. So, um, but I, I, I really like it. It's, it's really cool. Okay. So yeah, cool. I'd say check it out, especially if you're into animation and, and, and the animation of it's really neat. And yeah. I like it a lot. There's three seasons. So, and I think each season follows different people. Cool. I wonder if it's all the same concept. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, so it's they're all like people. on different trains or on the same train, um, potentially or whatever the yeah. case may be. But from what I've gathered, it's you know it's different people. So it, I, I like season one though so far. So I'm going to definitely keep watching it. And at 12 minutes an episode, like right. yeah, it's easy you know, to burn through. Yeah, exactly. And it grabbed me from the first episode. So I was like, this is really cool. So the other thing I wanted to mention really quick, I watched your 30 coins. Oh yeah, what you think? Max. So I watched the first episode only. Uh-huh. I'm not as crazy about it as you no. are, but I'm not going to say I don't like it. Like, I do like it. Yeah. This is the Spanish-speaking film or sh- show, show on HBO Max mm-hmm. that's kind of your x files I I don't even know, horror, whatever you want to call it. It's weird. Yeah. Um, it's definitely weird, and they definitely hit a lot yeah. of concepts that I haven't seen in even horror movies. Yeah. I I, I, I liked the first episode. Now, the great first episode is like an hour and a half. It's long. It like, is. It's really long. I think they're all kind of long. They're all like 45 minutes an hour at but, least. Yeah. The first one was a full hour and a half, but... I liked it okay. I wasn't as crazy about it as you, but I did like it. Yeah. So I, I'll say that. But, you, you know, and I'm I'm probably going to watch some more. I just, like, I bounce so hard on, I'm not like you guys with, especially Chris, with, like, uh, when it's um, text uh, subtitles. Mm-hmm. I just, like, I struggle with it. I don't know why. I just get, like, ADD <laughs> when it's subtitles. And mm-hmm. so I have to just be like, Poof. I need to, like, take some Adderall or something to watch it so I can just sit there. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> I but, will read every word. Right, exactly. Yeah, I think they're on episode five now. I think so. Or six, maybe. Yeah, it's like five or six. But this is another one that's on HBO Max, so we keep talking about HBO Max. But So that's on there. But then that's 30 coins. But uh, the only other thing... Uh, I won't even talk about that. So we, none of us talked about it, so I'll bring it up, is we've all been watching WandaVision. That's what I was literally yes. just remembered that I okay. have not caught up. Oh, you're since not. Since the first two. Okay. Then, yeah, there's only one more. Work. There's oh. Yeah, there's only one more for you to watch, and there'll yeah. be one this week, obviously. But, and it was definitely the best of the three episodes. 100%. Yeah, yeah, the best episode. Or is it four episodes? Are we three or four? I think it's only three. Okay. Nope. It's four. I was going to say, uh, yeah. it feels like it's been a no, while. No, because the I first time, it. the first week was two episodes. Yeah, yeah. they dropped two then, at once. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so I, I'll say I, now, I think I'm liking it the most out of our bunch, probably. And Mike. And yeah, our buddy Mike, he loves it. But yeah. um, it's like, I think this show for a lot of people, it just seems to be such a broad spectrum of, spe- spectrum of people's opinion on it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, there seems to be some people who really adamantly like hate the show online that I've seen. Oh, really? Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> there's like a, a guy, a commentator online it was like i saw a post from him and he's just like this is the worst show i've ever seen in my entire life and i'm just like that's a little extreme but yeah like, i mean it is for sure because i mean like, it's not my favorite yeah but i can see the merit and i can see what they're doing oh yeah well and now after this new episode like the show is really finding its yeah because then like, it's just confirmed everything i thought was happening exactly so i'm like okay i get why the first three episodes were the way they were yep i know why i don't like them that's because i don't particularly care for that style of show because it's done like a it's old a sitcom. sitcom right yeah and so, I, don't, I don't none of us watch sitcoms dream like of, the dream of genie and yeah bewitched, bewitched and yeah that. it's done like all those now I, I like all that stuff and sydney watches that stuff all the time like the old mm-hmm. ones like so I used to watch it back in the yeah. day. But. And since I've seen that stuff recently, because she watches that stuff regularly, I'm like, they did a pretty good job. Like, one episode was literally almost exactly like an episode of I Dream of Genie, or no, Bewitched, Bewitched, that we watched recently. Mm-hmm. Like, so, I mean, they hit the nail on the head with it. But this new episode for me was just like, that's where it clicks into the MCU. Like, yeah. They're like, this is an MCU show, don't forget. Like, yep. Also, we know you're wondering what's going on. Here's almost everything that's going on. Like, We're still leading you. Yes. That's that's the thing. It is like a mystery. Yeah. If you haven't seen this, it's basically a mystery. Yeah, based on Wanda and Vision, if the name doesn't mm-hmm. give it away. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd say check it out. If you're into Marvel stuff, I'd definitely say watch yeah, it. Yeah, it's on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. If you got Disney+, Plus, it's free. It's like whatever. Yeah. You know, so. Every Friday, you get an episode. Yeah. And I, I've got to wear, I, I do look forward to weekly shows. Like, I like when I'm like, oh, this is out today. Like, even like now American Gods is that way where it's like on Sunday. I'm like, oh, I got another one to watch. So. I funny still, I forget. Yeah. I like, we haven't watched this week's 30 coins because I forgot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Even though I really like the show. Yeah. 
I just like, oh, Xena reminded me this morning. Yeah, you're more of a binger. I'm more of a, yeah. like, I like when they drop it weekly. But with the kids and everything, sometimes for me, it's like, that's the easiest way for me to, because it's, oh, yeah, it can sure. be hard to binge stuff, like, just with them in general. So, but yeah, I, I, I've seen some other stuff, but I might, if I don't see a lot next week, maybe I'll bring it up. But so, I think we're good on what's new with you. You guys yeah. see? Yeah. yeah. Nice. So, what we'll do now is we will move into our movie review and we'll talk about uh, the film of the week, which is The Little Things, which is a phrase that is said very many times in this movie, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> the first time I was like, hey, yeah. and then yeah. the 10th time I was like, uh huh. Hey. Uh huh. <laughs> right. But yeah. So, but if you don't know about our format, especially with this being the first one that might be on video, I'll go ahead and run through. But basically, you know, our whole deal is to skewer rotten tomatoes. So we, uh, what we'll do is we'll talk about who should and shouldn't see this film in case you ha- don't really know anything about it. And then we will give our predictions for what we think the rotten tomatoes score is. And following that, we'll get into our movie review. Yeah. So uh, as far as what you guys think about who should and should not see this, or, well, really just what this movie is like, uh, what do you think? I've got a few pretty easy ones. I mean, if you like the movie Seven. That's exactly what I was going to say. This is more or less a watered-down version. A a lighter version. Not watered Watered down. down, Yeah, it is. It's not as hardcore as Seven. Seven is very dark. It's very dark and very graphic. We actually watched that right after this. Well, this made me want. I finished it and I was like, okay, I need to see. Literally, we did. We were like, oh look, and the credits were rolling, and HBO you know pops up the suggested, and Mm -hmm. there was Seven, and we're like, yep, Mm -hmm. click. Mm -hmm. And so it's very much like a less graphic Seven. Yeah, I in that style, it's definitely a detective. That and the Bone Collector, yeah, were the two that instantly p- popped into my mind. And then there are definitely some others, kind of in this genre. A lot of others in this genre for sure. But it's kind of that semi noir, you know, murder mystery, serial killer detective, detective yeah. movie. So I, I mean, dark, gritty detective film yeah. I, and I, I i as far as this genre i'm all about it I, i've actually this past year was kind of a bummer for me because i listen to these kind of podcasts all the time and this was like the first year in quite a few years that there hasn't been a new good like live detective style like yeah murder they're, podcast. They're really not, not that i can think of anyways yeah it's this was the first year in a while that i haven't listened to a new one so it was kind of a weird thing but so I was happy to see that this came out, and I, I mean, I knew nothing about this film. It's kind of a weird thing, you know. We've got we've got this insane cast, we've got a big level director, and it seems to have just kind of came out with not a lot of fanfare. Like well, I don't. It's funny. This, this is actually like the the movie that I've seen the most trailer for is really? in a very long time. Really, just because it was at the beginning of like every movie that we saw actually in theaters in like yeah. the past year. That's true. So. The one movie. The two. We've seen two. We've yeah, seen movies. two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I honestly didn't know anything about this movie until we went and saw Monster Hunter. And yeah. it we, we we you know got there on time, not thinking about it. And Yeah, it's been so the, long. The, the, the trailers were playing. Trailers. And I was like, oh, you know, the trailers are probably all for like, stuff like James Bond. Yeah. Well, then, lo and behold, surprise, surprise, this movie. And there was a couple other movies. I was like, wait. Yeah. There are other movies coming <laughs> yeah, out? Yeah, right. Yeah, so. they're just all Warner Brother movies. So <laughs> right, <laughs> but yeah, I, that's that's really a good setup for what you're getting into if you don't know anything about this movie. I mean, you know, what do you you, you see the cast there? You know, you know who's creating it at this point because we've told you like it, that's and it's very much in that vein of film. Yeah. So as far as Rotten Tomato score predictions, guys, it's been a little bit since we've done this. Mm. You, you guys up for giving some guesses? I always forget that we do this part. Like, it's like the, the, the most important part do. of it. <laughs> I just always forget. I know it. I know it. <clears throat> so uh, I'll go first if you yeah. want. Yeah. I, granted, I haven't really thought about this a whole you didn't lot. Cheat this time. I I never <laughs> cheat. <laughs> well, never that's true. We, cheat. we never purposefully <laughs> cheat. <laughs> it's just mostly accidents. Yeah, I, I'm, happy accidents. Uh, this is one of those that has me kind of perplexed as far as where it's going to sit. I really don't know. <sighs> I, yeah. I feel like. We're going to be sitting potentially somewhere in the 70s from both critics and audiences. I feel like. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and say 72 for both. 72 for both. I don't know that I've ever guessed the same score for both. Yeah. But for whatever reason, I just feel like they both might be in that range. Um, I'm going to do 80 for both. Ooh. Ooh, Nice. Copying on a duplicate. (laughs) (laughs) 
I'm going to say critics will give it a 68. Okay. And I'll say peeps will give it a 62. Okay. So 68 okay. and 62. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I think the critics are going to like it more. I think so. You think so? Okay. Yeah. I, I think actually there's a chance that you could you could be right about that for sure. I've oh, read that, a lot recently. So. I have been. It's weird. You've been weirdly right yeah. lately. Yeah. I started off like getting everyone. You were real bad about you this. Were, like dead on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we've 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 swapped our roles here. So yeah, I, I'm. I, this is another one where I'm pretty excited to see the roles, uh, the the w- what the scores are because I, I really. Just talk talk about like something that we knew nothing about. Like, right? Just, it's like what kind of material was out there that the press was seeing about this thing? Like, what were there? If anything? Yeah, like, or even the general audience? Were they even trying to push this? Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, it would be smart to. I feel like the cast is high dog. I know. You'd think, I don't know. Maybe right. Denzel's old enough now that he doesn't. No, I doubt call. it. I think he still brings audience. And what's his name is big in Remy's a lot of movies. Huge. Well, yeah, Remy's, Remy's blowing huge up. huge now. I mean, he was just in, in I mean, Bohemian, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. He just won all the awards for. Yeah. And. Uh, and then, you know, obviously we've got Leto, Leto. who brings people, yeah. you know, so, which interestingly that, well, we'll talk about it more about their appearances and stuff in this movie. It was, yeah. it was an interesting look at these guys and just different kind of roles than right. like similar roles, but also different, I guess is, yeah. it's kind of a weird thing. So I guess now we'll go ahead and move into our actual review for the little things. All right. Let's do I'll it. Do it. Let's do it. All right. So. Let's talk about first. I guess let's let's get y'all's opinions on if you liked it or not, and just up forward, you know, up front, you know, thoughts on it if you liked uh, it. I liked it. Did you? Yeah, it just felt very familiar. Okay. With some nice twists and some unexpected things yeah. happening, but it felt very. But I've seen like tons of these kind of movies, you know. Yeah, especially right. if you're into this genre. Like, right, watching you're just like, okay, this feels right. I haven't seen one of these in forever. Uh, yeah, it feels like. Yeah. So I was definitely here for it. Yeah, it was, it was okay. Yeah, like I didn't, I, I, I won't ever watch it again probably. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just a very predictable, not necessarily even predictable, but familiar. I guess familiar. Like what you familiar said. is a good way yeah, to put it. There's not, there was nothing surprising or new that was done in this movie. There was only one. <sighs> well, I don't even know how to. There, there's a thing about it that surprised me that we can get to in a little bit. I guess. But it's, it wasn't like a huge like <gasps> kind of surprise. It was like, oh, that was an interesting decision. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, I, I'm right there with you guys. Like, I probably won't ever see this again. Like, I would probably also recommend it though. Like, I'm you know, it's one of those where I'm like, yeah, watch it. Like, do you like these kind of movies? Right. If you're into the genre, yeah, then you'll like it. It's been a while since you've seen this. Like, these are three people that you probably like watching on a screen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We don't get movies like this anymore. That's my biggest thing. It's like we just don't really get these films anymore. Well, and so I that's like actually it. what I wanted to talk about. When we were talking earlier, yeah, there's movies that are dark and gritty mm-hmm. that they just don't really make anymore. Like it was a mood back mm-hmm. in the, like the late '90s, early 2000s, where things were just darker and grittier. Yeah, and for whatever reason, they've gone away from that in most movies. Very rarely do we find a movie that's just grungy and dark. Yeah, and that's where like we were talking about the Matrix, what it was, and they were yeah. doing the trench coat. I'm like, everything please, was edgy. Please yeah. bring back like. That latex and like the goth just feel. the goth, like, yeah, just like the the, the, the grunginess, the, yeah, like yeah. the German goth Actually, like styles. Like, come on. Well, and I'll say this: if you're into that, American Gods, like American <laughs> Gods, has that vibe in spades, and it's also weird as shit. Like this show is so weird. Okay, it's it's cool, and it does have that vibe. Like there's yeah. like like which actually speaking of like taboo weird things so uh, amongst all the events happening right now the new episode of american gods has freaking marilyn manson in it no kid you not oh, wow. amidst huh. everything going on with him right now what's going on oh he's in a, about later. he's being me too hoard right oh. now oh yeah he they're they're coming at he's him. been like fully canceled yeah oh, okay. he got dropped from his record label like everything it's gotcha. and of course like this week is the week that his episode dropped wow i'm surprised they didn't like pull the episode uh, at least i'm pretty sure if that wasn't him then he's got to look like but i'm <laughs> quite sure it's him because he's kind of an odd looking guy anyways like which it, it was like a if it was him which i'm pretty sure it was like long blonde wig and stuff so it was a totally different look oh uh, okay but like because it was like all these like metal heads and this grunge yeah. car and stuff so huh. Anyways, but that was kind of a divergent thing. But I will say, if you're into that mood, American Gods is probably a good little yeah. you know, detour for you. But yeah, this thing, it 
was just uh yeah, I, I I did like it. Like I didn't love it, and mm-hmm. there was nothing where I was just like, oh, like this is the thing. This is why you've got to watch this movie. Like right. there wasn't that, but at the same time, I'm not like I I definitely wouldn't be like this was a bad movie. Like all the acting was really good. Like yeah, I, right. I, like I yeah. thought. Oh yeah, for sure. All these guys put in fantastic Leto performances. Kills it. I feel he like does. He's, he's such a weirdo. Like, like he is a weirdo. He is I so. Love it. He and he. That's lo- all he does though. If you actually think about it, like, oh, all yeah. of his movies are just him being weird. weird. Yeah. Well, he, he's got almost like one note, which works. But it's just that's just how it is. That's his that's right. his stick. Yeah. yeah. But if hey, if you're gonna be in weird, then be weird, right? Exactly. Right. So he he does embrace it. Like, but he they made him look real bad in this movie, <laughs> yeah. and then they gave him the little pot belly. I know his little like, fat suit they gave yeah. him. There's no way. <laughs> well, I think Denzel had one too. Oh, we're getting some weird audio, guys. It is tripping out. Sorry. Okay, um, we're back. We never have weird audio. This is like the first week ever. I know. It's not me. A bunch of strange things happening this week. Sorry about that, guys. Ghosts. Yep. There's ghosts up in here. We'll just cut all this out. Yeah, right. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> just, uh, but yeah, he, and, and I'm pretty sure Denzel actually had some sort of suit because I don't think he's as big as he was. See, I just know he's older, so yeah, I could just is, see him being like, bigger. That's fair. I mean, I'm not saying it's not possible. But like, which and I haven't seen him in anything in so long. Maybe he has gotten bigger. Like, but I feel if he has, I feel like it was for this movie. Like, because they were clearly to me, it felt like they were focusing on the fact that this wasn't your like trim, slim Denzel. Like he was bigger in this movie than I've ever seen him. Yeah, for sure. But granted, like he's still just so charming and such a like handsome dude. Like he's just got an appeal. Like he smiles. And I'm just like I forgot how so much that I was. Love that's what I actually. That was one of my favorite things about this movie. Really, was that this? I felt like it was a very different role for him. Yeah, not in the sense that he's a charming fella because sure. he uses that. Yeah, to further his agenda and push the whole concept that Jared Leto is the bad guy. Yeah, and then he's like, yeah. We- we should just like stalk this guy. Like he broke the rules. Like yeah. he pretended to be a detective in what was it, LA, I think, or San Francisco, wherever uh, they were. Yeah, it was somewhere in California. Like he was breaking laws and doing his own thing. And that's so not Denzel. Yeah, for sure. And it's... he was pushing his own agenda. I mean, yes, he was trying to solve a crime, but he was pushing an agenda to solve an old crime. And in he his was head. still kind of the bag, like a. Bad, not a bad guy, but like he was a good guy breaking an rules. anti-hero, I guess. Yeah. Well, then it turns out, you know, he when he kills or then uh, what's his name kills Leto. He's like, all right, well, we're just gonna cover it up. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, holy crap! Like this is the big like character reversal for Denzel's character. Sure. Uh, just him himself, like right. what you know as Denzel. Right. Like which he, makes yeah. it more shocking cuz like you're it all did. trusting, you're like he knows what he's doing, like yeah, 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 this is right. He's on the right case and then he kills or then uh, Jerry Little char- Jerry Little's character gets killed and he just shows up and it's like, yeah. And you're like wait a second, he charmed the shit out of me to make this seem like it was okay. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. It's like he's not the best dude. Like clearly he's got some shady stuff. Like and we knew like he showed some instability throughout the film, but not until uh, Remy Malik accidentally kills Jared Leto's character mm-hmm. do you really realize like oh like didn't so like the reason he lost it is because he's not that like he's been up to some shadiness. Like yeah. he might have not been the squeakiest of squeaky clean cops. Like he yeah. might there's a reason why he ended up ousted. Well, see, that's the interesting thing, because they don't talk about that in the first half of the movie. Or, like, three They're quarters. just like, oh, you know, he had a heart attack, and, mm-hmm. you know, he needed to right. step away. Got and then, like, and... right, and then at the end of the movie, they're like, oh, no, no, that's not what happened. Yeah. No, he became obsessed after, and he killed a girl, like, and yeah. we covered it up for him, and then and we basically, like, drove him out of the department. Yeah, and that was a surprise, I'll say. Like, yeah. I didn't think, like, oh, he actually killed somebody, you know. Right. I hadn't necessarily seen that coming. Now, granted, with the way it was played out and the way they handled it, it wasn't, like, this big shocking thing. It was just like, oh, shit. Yeah. Dude. Right, like, you're like, oof. Yeah. That's not good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but and, and you... Murder. <laughs> <laughs> oof. Innocent oof. girl dead. <laughs> oof. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. And then, you know, you get to watch Remy just, like, spiral into insanity from being yeah. the squeaky clean, like, top dog dude to, like, following around Denzel and just, like, driving him into the ground, basically. Well, see, that was like, the part I was probably most confused about during the movie. I was like, I know there's people being murdered, and I know he's being driven, but he just threw, like, all reason out the window. Yeah, he kind of. They were like, "We've got the guy. I know it's him. We have no evidence, but 
but I know it's him. And that's all he went with. Yeah, he really did handle it lightly. And then, I mean, we're really jumping to the end at this point, but it's like, as far as we know, he didn't do it. Like, as far as we yeah. know, they might have not even there gotten There was, killer. like, no closure with this movie. No. Which is, like, frustrating, but at yeah. the same time, it's like, okay, it's fine because it's yeah. not something that's commonly done. Like, they right. didn't just, it wasn't just a feel-good, like, oh, yeah, you know. Right, there's not a bow it. on the top of this movie. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, they, they, they didn't pin it up with a bow, per right. se, but yeah. they did. They tie it up. Right. For Remy. It's a beret. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, it was, it was an interesting thing. I, I wasn't, which I will say when Remy opened the, uh, the thing in the, the hair bread or whatever it was mm -hmm. came out, I was like, man, it would really suck if that wasn't the real one. I was like, <laughs> but there's no way. And then at the end when he burns, I'm like, oh, that bastard. So like, I swear when Denzel breaks into um, Jerry Leto's apartment and he finds that um, cut out on the floor, mm -hmm. I swear the first thing he pulled out was a red beret. There was a red thing in there. There was. I don't remember what it was. I, I didn't swear, really like, at a glance, it was a beret. And I was like, oh, okay, so there's the beret. That's the evidence yeah. tying it. Except they haven't found any, like, the body. Yeah, it's like, I really wonder. So do you guys think he did it? Like, do y'all think he was, Jared Leto was the killer? I have. It's so hard to or tell because they never freak? really had evidence, but he did have a weird, like, hiding space in his floor, which is bizarre. Just well, like, like, there's no reason to hide that stuff. Like, why, why would you... Because it was, like, newspaper articles like, and... If, if you're just into crime stuff, yeah. like, be into crime stuff, you can post that on your fucking wall. Like, nobody... Sure. I don't know. It's Unless so you're just like, you know that you are kind of suspicious of a person. Like maybe, maybe, for example, what if he knew the person who was doing it, but he wasn't the person. Right. Like if he was tied in with this, but he wasn't the guy, like maybe which, he watched. Which or... they even brought it up about well, his original murder because he got charged yeah. with murder eight years ago and he was like, he knew everything about it, but yeah. he was a hundred miles away. So yeah. what you're saying exactly. makes sense. So it's mm -hmm. like, what if this guy it would be a wild concept and I kind of wish they could have gone deeper into it. Like what if the case was that they find found out that he was someone who finds people who are serial killers and like basically gets off by following them, watching them, keeping up with what they're doing, but doesn't ever do it. Right. Like the movie Nightcrawler. Yeah. Like Nightcrawler kind of. Yeah. Except for, <laughs> well, he, that's a little different. That is a really good movie. <laughs> it's a good movie. <laughs> that is a very good movie with Jake Johnson. Or not Jake, Jake Johnson, Hall. Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, <laughs> Jake Johnson. I would watch that movie with Jake Johnson. As a murder uh, people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, that would be a really cool thing. And I guess I kind of like that they left it up to the imagination. Well, and that's, that's so, like, after it was over, the first thing I thought was, well, they're going to know if that was the right person or not because the murders are either going to stop or they're, no, they're going to keep going. Yeah. Right. And so two people died in this movie. Mm -hmm. It was the random person that killed himself. Yeah. Or Jared Leto's character. Yeah. So they're either going to have had gotten the killer yeah. or they didn't. I, I would actually be like, that's how possible. they're going to find out because the math yeah. adds up. that's like when they keep at the having. very end, when he opens the envelope and out comes like the picture and the bread and he was like, okay, this is the confirmation. It's closure. What if the next day in the news? Yeah. Is three more killer. bodies found, including, Right. The missing it, runner. It could be, you know, there's copycats out there. Right. So there are. You never, well, I, you never I would, know. I would have been totally down, honestly. I'm usually not as much into these with movies, but I would have been totally down if, like, they did a little bit afterwards and were, like, you know, basically showing, like, a couple months later or whatever, and they see on the news that there's another murder and then it, like, ends. Right. And, you know, there's a potential for, like, another movie with the two of them, Remy's unhinged and whatever, and they find out that it's a similar situation like what we were talking yeah. about. Or, I think they just cool. wanted to leave this one open. They did, yeah. For discussion also and okay. debate, because yeah. I know when, it, when it ended, Zine and I, like, discussed it right yeah. then. Because we did the same thing. We're like, do you yeah. think that was Jared? Do you think Jared Little did it? Because, like... I mean, it was also strange for an innocent person to, like, decide he wants to lead a detective right, to what he did. on a wild goose chase well, and also, then, like, poke and prod him. And, like, the biggest thing that I kept going to was I was like, if he did do it, burying the body is not this killer's M.O. Right. Like, that's not what this killer does. He doesn't bear, as far as we know, he doesn't bury bodies. <clears throat> so yeah, it's like. He puts them on display. He puts them on display. So it's like, there wouldn't be a body here. Right. That's what, that's, that's what bothered me. With um, 
what's his name? Remy. Remy's character. Yeah. Was he just decided, yeah, I'm just going to believe you, and I'm just going to like go out into the middle of the Get desert in his with car. you. Mm-hmm. And ride with him, like I know, I'll follow you. I'll I know that's you. where I was like, "This is becoming stupid. Like yeah. this is becoming it, dumb." Yeah. Because there was no reason. If he suspected him, then he should have arrested him. But they I, don't have any evidence. Well, that's like, the thing is, I think that that was the thing is he didn't have any evidence. He was getting so unhinged. He didn't have Denzel with him, and he's just like, "I gotta know. I gotta figure it out." Like I'm, I'm losing my mind. Like I feel like the problem is we didn't have any backstory for Remy's character. Yeah, like, we did. Is this normal for him to be this obsessed with cases? I don't think it was. Like, like that's where it's like it, it feels very uncharacteristic from what sure. he's portrayed as like a very like together um, you know monotoned yeah I'm very cool and calm but and then he just like to then just it. like I don't know, flip it is a weird to like not have any the only skill. thing that i could guess with that is he you know sits there and he sees denzel's character he sees what happened to him sees what happened to his career all that and it made him kind of question his own career and his own place because he you did see on his face when he was like oh like i am literally the guy that replaced him like i took his spot i didn't know that and so it's like you could tell that that was the beginning of like the little seed of him just being like shit like you this know. is what I'm gonna. This is what's gonna happen. Yeah. Especially when they're like, "Oh yeah, like he got stuck on a case that he couldn't solve." Exactly. And, and he's then, like, "Well, I can't solve this case." Yep. Shit. And it might be the same case, you know. Yeah. So it, it, I could, it, I could follow that. It is a little kind of, eh, but you know, I think sure. for the most part, it all worked pretty well. And either way, it's like with the acting of these three individuals. Oh yeah. Like, and, and it just got. I I still like. I don't know. Now there have been plenty of. Denzel movies over the past few years or whatever that I haven't seen, but it's like every movie I see that dude in, I just love. Like he's so good, yeah. Like and he's just been around since we were kids. Like the guy is just mm-hmm. great. Yep. And I, he's still just got it. Like it's yep. not like he's lost his his luster in any way, shape, or form. And you know, with, with Remy and with uh, uh, Jared Leto, they're both just still doing great work. Like it's it's it, it was great casting for this thing. I think. Right. You know. Yeah. I agree, and I hope a lot of people do see it, because I, I definitely thought it was a very interesting and thought-provoking movie. Yeah, and actually, I think that it's, thinking about that, it, it is more approachable than something like Seven. It's like, you almost have to have a stomach for Seven. Oh, you have to have a stomach, like especially like, after rewatching it. Yeah. Because it's one of those movies where I watch it every couple of years, and then it's long enough where I've forgotten most of it. Mm-hmm. And so I'm rewatching. I'm like, man, this reminds me of Saw. Yeah, it's close. The Saw franchise. It's close. It was like that before, just less torture porn It was more like the result of. Yeah, it's it like, like the after. Yeah, exactly. It's like if somebody were to go around behind Saw. <laughs> right. Yeah. For sure. And just take pictures. Yeah. Like, hey, look, but I would say that Seven is way better than this movie. Personally. Yes, yes. I enjoy yeah, it I think so. I, I like Seven better. Yeah. I mean, it does. There's nothing bad with this movie. Yeah. Like, there's nothing wrong. It just, it just wasn't. There's just nothing that, that made this right. that level. Yeah. It, it it was missing a little something, and maybe it was a you know some story elements, some something was. I think it just needed some more surprise, honestly, some more right. suspense, and yeah. I think it could have added to that tension. They're just like there were some suspenseful moments, but they just weren't that level. You never really felt like, oh no, yeah, it wasn't one of those suspense moments where it's like the music's blaring in your ears, like. Something's yeah. going on, like it's super suspenseful. Oh. Yeah, exactly. And then it's like the whatever most suspense there was is when the cops were going to the house that they had to that he snuck in. Yeah, yeah. And then the at the end when Remy's with with Jared Leto, but and that That's whole right time I, I was just thinking like if he is the guy. This is obviously bullshit. Like, he doesn't bury bodies. Like, that's not what this dude right. does. Well, that's that's so weird. Because, and that's what I thought was so weird is because, okay, you're a good detective and you're no longer thinking. Like, you're not thinking, is this the killer's MO? Like, yeah, this doesn't make sense. There's no way he's out here moving bodies out the Timbuktu. Yeah, it just and, and also, them. why did he have the keys? Like, so did he own that land? So that means like, he just owns land, which then would no, drive. He said, he said that he has a friend... That they go hunting out there. That's, oh, he did say he that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. So that's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. It, but it was still just kind of an odd thing. Like it's just like this just feels like a regular dude that's into some weird stuff. I was and... curious about the pictures. 
Yeah, the the uh... they had like the negatives in his bathroom. Well, and that's that's where like I almost wish they could have done more with that because they also showed that he had the fake teeth. Yeah, yeah, and he they did. had even pointed out that, and I think we were just supposed to, like kind of quickly glean from all these things like that's suspicious. Mm-hmm. Oh, he has fake denture. He has dentures, so that means yeah. his his bite marks his bite might different. be off. Which is they said there was like something wrong it was with inconclusive because there was like a part missing or something yeah. like that. Which maybe his dentures were out. And, yeah. Is a there was enough like circumstantial to make this is suspicious. Maybe yep. we should get a forensics team in here to investigate. Yeah, but that's not, you know, what they did. They instead decided just, and that's the thing is, even if he was the killer, like they broke so many laws that would have all been thrown out. Sure, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, exactly. Like they're like, we can't use any of this. You guys, you guys just... illegally broke in. You're yeah, not even can... a cop in this in this area. Yeah. You broke in to his apartment. So anything you found then is. In thrown out of court, yeah. Unless they just cover up the whole thing and lie for each other, and he's basically which, like, you know, which, which yeah. happens, you which know. is right. the theme of the story. Sure, exactly. Which so. is another interesting thing. Talk about like a hot topic. Yeah, we're, we're gonna put out a movie about cops covering up for yeah. each other. Yeah, making shit up, making shit up, and yeah, covering that we in, killed an innocent girl and yeah. killed a potentially innocent guy who's just well, crazy. And, and the trickle down level of it is like where it's like the. The main cop involved is, you know, he's he's wrapped up in it. His wife, who's the coroner, is wrapped up in it. Who we haven't was even that his wife about. or no, that wasn't his wife? It was no. his ex wife. No, it wasn't. No, no, no. He there were two different women because yeah. his his uh. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah dude. He went sure. to her house and yeah. she was like, "Yeah, oh, he did go to that." I didn't know you were yeah. here. Okay, okay. She was. I think she was a nurse. That's probably where you're getting confused. I think oh, she was, she a, was nurse. a nurse. Yeah. That's and then that was a fling. I think that was a fling until. I thought it was a fling until the very end when they show that she was the coroner that covered up for him. Okay. Yeah, I think so I'm not just sure. Co-worker. They were in it yeah. together. He clearly yeah. implicated her. Oh, you yeah. Because know, well, she, she had, had the bullet. She had to go along with it or yeah. else he was fucked. Well, she made like a keychain out of the bullet or whatever. Yeah, I know. We're talking about a yeah. weird thing there. Be like, ah, now I have evidence that I can hold over mm-hmm. him anytime. I thought Remember it was this a little flower, bo- the first thing I, I saw did it. too, but I then like, I thought it was a weird looking flower and it crossed my mind. I was like, that almost looks like a bullet. Yeah, and then it was gone because it was such a fleeting yeah, was, thing. Yeah, yeah. It, well, yeah, and it does seem like there was something between them, but maybe it was just the history of the covering up a crime and right. whatever. I guess right. that's why I was thinking it was why, like, but yeah, they were. Well, it's the thing is they don't show them too often. They either. don't. Yeah, they don't. That was kind of quick, like ha- all that stuff. But mm-hmm. and it was interesting, like him. You could tell, like, with him talking to the bodies and like s- hallucinating the people in the house. And- <laughs> yeah. That was really weird. When she was, like, at his feet. At his feet, because it looked like she was sucking on his toes. Yeah. And Dino was like, did he get a hooker that's just sucking I, on I, his dude, toes? Dude, that's what I thought at first, yeah. too. I was like, did he get one of those hookers to just, like, hang out while he's looking at these murder pictures? They're like, this got real dark. Real and I was bad. like, man, this is going somewhere new. Yeah, yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, exactly. So, And then I was like, wait a second, there's two more, and they uh-huh. look kind of like the pictures. Ghosts. Yep, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> kinky ghosts. <laughs> right. And I actually did. There were some cinematography choices actually, though, in this movie that I did like. Like d- when they were doing some of the. I, I, it's not really a chase scene. The follow scene where he yeah. like where they they did a couple cool shots where the camera is panning down the road and it shows you like where he is in relation to where they are and like they did a cool a couple interesting little shots here and there and uh, you know to help set some of the atmosphere. I wish there had been a little bit more of that. But and just some more action in general, just a little bit, not a lot. I didn't need yeah. a lot, just a little bit. I guess that's kind of what I was lacking. Yeah, just a little bit of but action. But I think that's or... just like a personal preference. Per- yeah, exactly. Because I, I I did feel it like I'm like I just need just a little bit more. Like mm-hmm. I like this, but I just need a tiny bit more. So, but all in all, yep. I mean, still, it was a it was a good movie. It just wasn't great. Yeah, yeah. So everything that they did in there, they did well. Yeah, they just could have done more. Yeah, and I. I I, I'm trying to think. Is there anything else that you guys want to talk about with this thing? I mean, there's mm, not like a. I don't think so. A ton, really. I mean, we've covered a lot of it. We've covered the end, and uh, yeah, we've covered all the twists and the majority of the story. Yeah, I, I can't think of anything offhand that really jumps out that we haven't covered. But you know, I, I thought, you know, I. I kind of almost, it's like part of me does almost hate that we aren't getting more of these characters. Like, I kind of want more. Right. Like, it, it, I could see this working as, actually, as, like, a longer form with more substance, like, true detective, you know? 
yeah. with these guys, like just a Where season you get or five something. hours. You yeah, know, exactly. Like, of this and like a little more story and a little more mystery and action and whatever. Like, right. And I, I would have been down for that even. Yeah, a little but, more flashbacks about right who they why were. this really drove Denzel like back in the day kind mm-hmm. of deal and yeah yeah because I actually did enjoy kind of the, the their their partnership and it was an interesting look at that the the way that these guys interacted and I will say too it was nice you know this movie was set in the 90s and mm-hmm. which I, I liked um, yeah and it worked well because there was a lot of things that were happening where I was like if that happened now there would just be cameras everywhere and they would know what everyone was doing all the time <laughs> yeah. so <laughs> but right and you just text you'd be like hey yeah I'm gonna go follow them right yeah, yeah. Like all that stuff kind of plays out differently when you're now, but yeah. you know, I, uh, I, I liked that choice, but, and I really liked that we have this, you know, obviously this is a movie that's made now it's brand new and it's placed in the nineties and we have this diverse cast and it's not chalked to the brim with a bunch of SJW bullshit. There was none of it. There was yeah, as the nineties. If you included any of that, right. It wouldn't fit a nineties movie. But they would, though. It would not, like, it be wouldn't. time or place appropriate. No, I mean, I agree. But the problem is but that that's what didn't. everybody does now, you know. And I'm so happy. Yeah. And maybe some of that has to do with Denzel or maybe the director or whatever. Because Denzel doesn't seem to be about that life. Like, he's not about, like, playing that. Yeah. I, side he's never things. in, like, the news, as far no. as I can tell. Well, they kind of – he's he's – basically come out and basically it seems like in years he hasn't recently but basically just been like like i don't this isn't me like i'm not buying into this like division shit like so you know i I was just it was it was a breath of fresh air especially after american god season two those couple episodes that like really riled me up and like i just because i could see them doing that there are plenty of directors that would have done some heavy-handed shit and even if it was just a handful of remarks just basically being like borderline looking at the camera and being like well this is the 90s and everybody's racist like and you're just like okay yeah fuck off like you know yeah. but whatever they didn't do that and it, it just it was nice for me I, I just like i'm getting so tired of it it's just exhausting you, like, you watch different things i guess <laughs> like yeah it just uh, it just seems like it's like uh, well i there were some other shows that i didn't talk about that i watched that kind of were doing some of the same things i'm just like mm. fuck man guys lay off like if you're gonna do any of this like just not so heavy-handed like yeah it's just exhausting but you know i guess everybody's got their preferences but it's just i'm just i'm so ready for us to be at a point where they're not bludgeoning people to death with this just like i, just have don't, know, a I don't know when that'll be i don't either. like it just seems like that's just gonna be how it's gonna be yeah people gonna, like to eat that up and they yeah like to be inundated with it so it, it, yeah well as we keep watching it. the shows and it sells right now, so yeah. well for certain crowds, I guess. But and maybe that's the thing is it's going to take enough people just being like, I'm not going to watch this. Like I'm just I'm tired of this. Don't put it in. And if viewership goes down. People stop shoving it down your throat. It's just like it's it's one thing to have a diverse cast. That's amazing. Like great, fine, right? Like, but you don't have to just constantly bludgeon me with like your soapbox. So I don't know. I was just it was nice. It was refreshing for this thing. So I guess that was all I was gonna. It, it just I actually like no, noticed it, but maybe that was partially because of some of the stuff I've been watching lately. The other things, yeah. So I don't know. Anyways, but uh, y'all want to go ahead and talk about Rotten Tomatoes? I want to see what people thought about. Oh, yeah. it. yeah, let's so do it. I actually forgot to pre-type this in, so Ooh. it's gonna take me a second. It's the one thing I forgot to do this week, so this might take a moment. Shame. Shame. It's the little things, man. Oh, God. <clears throat> oh, so one thing I thought we was didn't interesting. We didn't talk about that. We didn't talk about that, but I also kind of wanted to talk about the trailer for a second, since I did see this trailer in theaters. Yeah, yeah. It was interesting. This trailer does do one of the things I fucking hate about trailers, and it literally showed many things from the last 15 minutes of the movie. Oh, did it? I guess it shows him with the trash bags. It shows. Oh. Um, yeah, sitting in the room holding his head. Uh, it really? shows Remy when he has this whole. Um, there's a whole mo- inner monologue that goes on at the very end. Mm-hmm. That's in the trailer when he's sitting by the pool. Um, oh, we said we were going to start watching trailers after we watched. I know. I forgot. Yeah. Uh, we'll do yeah. it next week. Yeah, that needs to be. A but thing it was that we interesting do because I will say they did include all these scenes, but the way they did it in the trailer made sense for the first half of the movie. Yeah. So I, w- I do appreciate that, but I freaking hate that they did. They did that. I'm glad I didn't remember that or know that because when that type of stuff happens and there's a scene like that burned into my mind, yeah. I'm just constantly thinking I haven't seen that part. Well, yet. see, that's what right. I thought about because I was like, where when when's Denzel gonna be surrounded by black trash bags? Yeah. yeah. Until they killed Jared Leto at the oh very end, shit. and then I was like, 
I see where this is going now. Yeah, the cover up. Because when I saw it in the trailer, I my thought was he'd either collected a bunch of people's trash or this was a bunch of evidence that he was going to go through. He becomes a garbage man. He becomes a garbage collector. See, I thought one of the cops was going to be the actual serial oh, killer. Oh, okay. And that yeah. Jared Leto character just like kept up with Yeah, stuff. what was going on. Yeah. Yeah. See, I thought Remy was gonna be going to be the, the killer, like be dirty. Yeah, and he has that like that look. He has that vibe. He's very good. At, if you see Mr. Robot, like he's which where he got his start, and he's so that show's so good. It is the first couple like, seasons. The, yeah, I need. I actually that was a show that I bailed on because Sydney quit watching it like yeah. partially through. The first two seasons were good. I think the yeah. third season got too far from the show's concept. I'll say I I didn't finish it, but I know that Kyle Gazak, who's been on the podcast multiple times, he he he. Uh, loved all this i guess like all the way up to the end he said it ended fantastically oh, did like, it? he loved it i don't think i finished it so yeah I, I know i didn't and at some point i might go back but i do like him he does a great job so yeah you know yeah but well i do have the uh the little things pulled up here all right on, let's uh, see on rotten tomatoes so let's see and i will move the window over to where you guys can actually take a look at it so here we go let's take a look oh 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 I caught a glimpse. <laughs> did you now? Yes, I did. Oh, <laughs> oh Chris was definitely the closest. So the scores on this thing is that it had a 48% by critics, and it's got a 64% by audience. Now, there's 181 rev uh, critic reviews, which is right around the middle. Um, it's not like the peak of when we were doing this podcast. Yeah. Before. People it's were, higher yeah. for lately. Though. Lately, it is higher for sure. Yeah. We've been having some pretty low numbers for critics, uh, but it's only 250 people. So, or well, it sure. says 250 plus, which I've never seen anything that, quite that's like that. weird. Usually, it gives you we've seen like numbers. thousands. Yeah. So yeah. this is a pretty. They low. can definitely do specific numbers. Yeah. So. <laughs> y plus. Yeah. Like what is that? Yeah, we've never seen that. But now, granted, that is considered a solid audience score. But the thing is, now we know, like it's sitting. This is probably it's not going to get much higher than that. It's not going to change from here as far as a critic score. That's already yeah. a significant yeah. chunk. Like it's not going to move the needle much. And as we've seen, like a forty-eight is a splat. So this is going to affect people watching it without a doubt. And so, but see, I, I actually think it's kind of funny. After talking about it with you guys, yeah, I can kind of see why they'd give it a forty-eight percent. Yeah, 50, you know, like half of them half like people like it, half people don't. Half of them going, this is something it. kind of missing the. I'm sure like when we get into talking about it, they're gonna yeah. probably say something along the lines of, "This could have used a little more action, a little more suspense," where mm -hmm. that was kind of lacking. So. Yeah, and that's so they've actually changed the the layout of the site on Rotten Tomatoes since the last time we did this. They so they have. moved the critics consensus, and they actually have a critics consensus and an audience says, which is interesting, huh. so, which is new. So it says the critics consensus is an exceptionally well cast throwback thriller. The little things will feel deeply familiar to genre fans for better and for worse. So, I mean, that's fair. Like, that's that is literally it. Yeah. <laughs> literally I mean, what I said. Yeah, we pretty much said the exact same <laughs> and thing. I didn't so. cheat. It just is that familiar feeling. Yeah. And so, for audience says, it says the story is nothing special and the ending might be a letdown, but there's a welcome focus on the emotional toll taken by police work and you can't argue with the cast. I pretty much agree with that, too. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I yeah. didn't necessarily say that the ending was a letdown. Like, it was right. and it wasn't. Like, it just it, depends it, on what you want. It happened really quickly. I guess probably they were trying to say about that is that it happened so quickly. Yeah. Like, when, it was literally, he just turned around and hit him with a shovel and dead. Yeah. I thought he was going to be, like, passed out, and they were going to have to be like, oh, shit, like, what do we do? Like, do we kill him now? Yeah. Like, there wasn't yeah. this additional dilemma. It was a snap decision and a snap result. Yeah, like, Denzel, like, I'll take care of everything. Then he takes care of everything, right. and it's basically yeah. the end. Like, yeah, because Zena literally asked me, she was like, is he dead from that? And I was like, I don't think so. Yeah, I wouldn't think so, but I'm like, man, he must have pummeled him with that I one know, swing right from on the like temple. Yeah. from below, like yeah, because he was wasn't he in a hole. Yeah, he uh, or still right at the like edge. It just started. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was just like, man, I did not yeah. think that was gonna kill him. Yeah, he got him good apparently. So, <laughs> which and after you see his face and stuff, and there's blood, and you're like, okay, yeah, he's looking pretty dead. But, yeah, but yeah, so uh, we'll see here. So. The first one I'm looking at, uh, the Daily Beast, uh, 
Nick with the Daily Beast says, its modest suspense is largely offset by the fact that there's nothing substantial or especially original lurking beneath its eerie ex- exterior. Um, and I mean, I guess like I can't necessarily argue with that. You know, this isn't one of the typical like overly pretentious critic things. It's just kind of like yeah, he's like, yeah you know, it's it's kind of eerie and whatever, but it's not super surprising or. Right. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't. I mean, I guess at the very end it was kind of surprising, but yeah. it wasn't one of those things where I was like, oh, my God. It didn't, like, shake you to the core? No. Kind of like... It was more of just, yeah. like, surprise that I'm like, man, they didn't give us an answer. <laughs> like, right. we don't know what happened. We don't know who the killer <laughs> was. So, uh, and then, oh, God, another, the salon.com. Ah, oh, freaking salon.com. Our com. enemies. <laughs> our mortal enemies. So, uh, sure this, this, this is not Matt from salon.com, though, as we've talked uh, about. So, Melanie. Yeah, yeah Melanie. Is Mel- Melanie, I guess. Uh, Melanie. <laughs> hey, hey, Rom. <laughs> hey, hey, Rom. <laughs> uh, it says, uh, holding this film back is something more significant. A flaccid script written around a half decent premise that some of the best actors currently working can sell in moments but not as a whole i don't know that i fully well, so, agree with that like i didn't think the script but, was that bad like i feel like the suspense and things that we were talking about that's missing was probably from the script yeah i mean for sure i mean it's the story as a whole like now i don't think like i guess it depends on what aspects of the script is it like the story as a whole or is it you know like individual scenes and like the how the characters were written mm-hmm. and, you know what i mean because I, I didn't feel like the characters were really written that bad it was more no. of just like where the story what the story did yeah so i can agree with you that know, and i don't know that i'd call it flaccid like it was just not perfect it wasn't like great See, that's it what was I'm just saying. okay like, like, they didn't do any it wasn't there was nothing bad about this movie it just yeah. wasn't great yeah. like it was just there was nothing that stood out yeah. as like and the interesting thing is really if you good. think about it it's like okay well let's say like the thing that i read where it says that he wrote this years ago yeah you know it's been mm-hmm. sitting for a while it's like well maybe what it needed was just like maybe they should have freshened this up and been like hey people have been seeing this kind of stuff for years like mm-hmm. since i've written this x y and z have come out like maybe we need to add this this and this and maybe yeah, that's I all wonder it how long ago this was written like yeah. was this written in like the height of like these detective movies and shows, oh, man. Because I'm... that may be why I was like, we need to put this one on the shelf for a while because there's so many movies like this. I know. I'm, I'm really. I'm trying to find it. I'm. I'm on IMDb here. I was trying to find out when he. Because the thing that I saw said when he wrote this, and I just. I'm not a hundred percent sure where. I think it was on IMDb somewhere, but I just don't remember where. I wish I could find it because it specifically said when it was he wrote yeah. it. Like, he was like when he was making blah movie, he wrote this script, and so we would have gotten an idea of when. But I just didn't look when I saw that, so I gotcha. should have looked. But okay, so one more splat here. Um, I wanted to see one of their, one of the other top critics that, uh, we'll look at uh, the Epoch Times here. So, uh, melancholy settings for cheap hotels, serial killer apartments, morgues, and crime labs feed a substantial background, which, even if the action is passively stimulating, might add to the growing stack of little quarantine things that already depress you. <laughs> so, I... I to a degree, I kind of get what he's getting at as far as like it just being dingy and whatever. And it's like if you're already kind of down in the dumps and whatever with the time that it came out, like, yeah, like it's which a stupid review, I know, right? It kind of is. Well, this I'll... depressing mo- movie made me depressed during this R- depressed time, right? Exactly, <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. watch depressed movies, yeah. right? Yeah, and and that's kind of my thing. Like, I will say, like, for a while throughout like this whole COVID time, I was like straying away from more depressy, stressy things. But, like, now I'm kind of at that point where I'm like, all right, we're a year in. This is our Time life now. I things. accept it. Yeah. Like, let's watch people get murdered. So, you know, <laughs> like, but, yeah. I don't Boy, know. I have that's... a movie for you. <laughs> right, yeah. So uh, I do want to see a couple solid scores here. Uh, so this is a site, I guess, Little White Lies, a familiar and inessential, but still they really don't make them like this anymore, which is basically what we said. Like, yeah. you know, it's because they really don't. Like, the, yeah. This genre really kind of disappeared. Yeah. It's kind of gotten... I don't know if it's because it's something where we, you know, we had some real bangers like Sansa Lamb, Seven. Yeah. Where they they did all these great movies, and there was all these other movies that weren't as great, and these movies, other movies that were just not Zodiac 2, actually. That's another one we haven't mentioned. And so I wonder if it's like, 
all of those where they felt like they'd done it all. Uh-huh. And so they had to really take a break mm-hmm. before they did anything. So, yeah, for sure. And maybe they feel like they can't really do them nowadays and with I mean, all like the shootings that we have all the time. And maybe, and I mean, maybe well, there's just tons of like shooting. Movies, sure. Yeah. That's true. <coughs> Excuse me. If guns I are feel, issue, I feel like honestly, probably what it is, is a lot of the landscape's just been swallowed up by all the shit we nerds love. You know, it's the superhero that's movies. That's true. It's the They're always stuff. sinking it's their money into, like... Like, that's all the stuff we love is kind of overshadowing this kind of stuff. Right. Like, it just is. Yeah. You know, and then this this is kind of just a byproduct of that. So Rolling Stone actually liked it as well. Um, Little Things knows it has a job to do, and it does that job well. It entertains. And, yeah. Yeah. It seems like that's kind of the case. You know, it's... These the, the, the people that like it are kind of where we are, where they're like, this isn't movie of the year, but right. it's not bad. Like, And I'd tell yeah. certain people to watch it. And I think I don't think I finished saying what I was going to say earlier, which was like, this movie is a bit more approachable, where it's like, you know, I would feel fine being like, saying to like my folks or something like, yeah, you should check this out. Like, it's pretty interesting. It's good. It's got Denzel and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, I wouldn't be like, yo, go watch Seven, like, to my <laughs> folks. Yeah. Sam, sure. I feel it. You know, so yeah. like this is an easier one to recommend to certain certain audiences who might want something like this, but not want something that's so dark or murdery that it's right. just like, Ew. yeah. So this is it does kind of ride that middle line, which kind of makes sense for Denzel as well. You know, the things that we've seen him in over the years, where it's like he doesn't have a problem doing an R movie, but you don't see him doing, you know, something super like, graphic ones. Exactly, at least that I know of per se. So. Yeah, I don't think we need to dig in this a whole lot more. I don't think no. that necessarily the critics were too hard on this one. This they seem one... pretty fair, and they almost align with us. Mm-hmm. It's just interesting that they it's give just... it a 48%. Well, exactly. It's one of those things where it's like, I think, where you just had to make that decision. Am I going to give this a thing that's going to make it give us a splat or a solid tomato? Like, right. which side of that fence are you going to lean on? So I was even thinking so... of, like, that. I think the first one that you red that was the solid tomato yeah. i was like that could also have been a splat like yeah oh no actually the first one was a splat no no i'm saying the, oh, first, the first solid, solid tomato that yeah. you read yeah, could yeah, also yeah, yeah, yeah. Be for sure inter- like, it could be it, looked at splat, either way a splat like it can be the same thing like for sure it's just 50 percent. yeah it's just okay. how they decide like which and as we've said like sometimes all these people give different scores where it's like they might give it a three out of five. They might give it a two out of four stars. They might give it a, right. and they're all on their own personal scales. Yeah. And so it's like whatever that person decided, cause it's like, they make the decision where they're like, I know if I put this, it's a splat for me versus I know that it's a solid tomato for me. And it's more of just like, this one isn't as much of an issue as the system as we normally see. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, I think a lot of people were right on that line of like, ee, yeah, like, yeah, like so, it's just either you were um a little more on board or a little less. It doesn't seem like anybody's just like hating this thing though, which we run into no. right. regularly, where we just see people like coming out of left field. And being That's a because more... like because that was what everyone said. They're like, oh, the script was weak, but the cast, yeah, like, but, like the saved cast, it. Though, like yeah, they did, and the performances from those guys, like right, you know, it was great in that respect. So. It's kind of just which side do you want to lean on. So I think this is one that we don't have to get into too deep with that. It's, it's No, I feel like yeah. we've hit it. I, yeah. They've agreed with us. We've agreed with them for we've the most they, part. They agreed with us. Yeah. Sure. I, the only thing about <laughs> it for me is just I kind of, it's just the, the main thing is just that that sitting right at 50% sucks because people are going to see that splat. Oh, yeah. Like they're gonna see that, and oh, yeah. I don't know if you've noticed because you were asking about Peacock earlier. Peacock has started putting the Rotten Tomato scores on a lot of the stuff no. that's on there, and it ticks me off because they <sighs> even do it for shows, and I'm just like, what? Like I haven't seen that. Why do that? Like, are you trying to make like, do you want people to watch stuff on your platform or not? Do not give them a Rotten Tomato right. score. That's literally why Netflix pulled the percentages off of everything. Because I don't know if y'all remember years ago, Netflix gave you the percentages. Oh yeah. Of I do remember that. People liking it, and not liking it. That. You could give shows thumbs up and thumbs down, and they would show. So if you had, like, yeah, you could see stuff with like five percent likes yep. and right. things like that. And they that. got rid of all that. Yeah, because you don't necessarily want that. If you're a platform, you don't want to deter people. from You don't want people something. to necessarily knowing because you bought something and maybe it's getting really torn up. Yeah, you still want people so to watch it. I so. still want you to see it. Like, it's also so dependent on people. Like they're obviously the end 
result of you know yeah what it, whether what or not they or like not. the movie like yeah you guys love specific rim <laughs> i don't the critics are gonna have, still have that same score sure and some people will love it and some people won't it is very true no, it's just, it's just like, like i, I think it doesn't matter but but the <laughs> thing so is well. like if you're if you're scrolling on something and you're uncertain and you don't know anything about it and you see it as like a 10 percent, you're gonna you're be a less lot less likely, likely to, to watch it, it though right well that's what i'm saying is that it doesn't make sense for them to have it on there right oh, yes like, yeah, 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 yes yeah. i completely agree because who knows? Yeah, if maybe we like should uh, write them a strongly worded letter. Yeah, we should. You should. Three. Well, I don't care about Peacock, so <laughs> but you guys can. <laughs> I, I haven't really used it that much. I just You'll saw that see. Harry Potter's were on there. So yeah, it's yeah. just a, it's a weird thing. Like I was just like super surprised that they did that. I was like, of all the platforms to use as far as review scores, like at least use Metacritic or something where it comes from regular people. Like, right. Do not give people these scores. Like this is not helping. <laughs> but your I mean, platform. Amazon though has scores on there too they normally have metacritic and something else i think it's literally their own imdb platforms. maybe is it i thought it was it might be and it might be their own their personal own. like yeah. scores or whatever but because yeah, you can leave reviews on amazon well for like everything yeah right? you can well and the good thing about a lot of those is that it's at least regular people like right and a lot of people don't even understand like when they see that rotten tomato score the only score they're being funneled is the one from the critics and yeah. it regularly does not align like, I mean, as we see with this, like, they're not terribly far apart, but still, you see that solid popcorn bucket versus the splat. Like, right. Isn't right. there some site or something that uses only the um, the audience score? I thought there was something that only uses uh, one of them. I don't know. I can't remember where. Well, I mean, I don't know. Usually, they only use the critic score. I've seen that plenty yeah. of places, but I've never seen them use just the audience score. That would be the smart thing to do, right. because who gives because a shit? We what, are the audience. Right? We are. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. But anyways, yeah, we'll uh, not beat this dead horse anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. But, on. yeah, we'll go on. And I guess as far as next week goes, like we've said, we don't really know what's coming down the pipe. Like, it's just been kind of a scatter shot. It depends on what pops up for rent. We've been tossing around some ideas. We were even mentioning earlier maybe uh, tax, tax, collector. tax Collector is a possibility. Actually, also a movie I was talking with Matt about. And I think you, you heard me talk about it, too. Maybe Chris was... Uh, <laughs> There's a, I think it's called Love and Monsters. Um, I think is what it was called. It's supposed to be like a Zombie Land meets uh, Warm Bodies, almost. And it's got, uh, I can't think of the actor's name now. It's the guy from the Maze Runner series. He's in it, and I, I've been intrigued in seeing it. And I think it's finally like where you can pay her in it. So okay. I was even looking at that one. Like, there's some options. Um, so. We'll poke around and see what's popped up that's not a twenty dollar rental, yeah, or what's maybe new to stream. I see if it's something in theaters, maybe, or something in theaters. I enjoyed being in the theater the other day, so that was mm -hmm. nice. So, you know, there might be some options. We'll just kind of see. And I'm, I'm, I guess I'll finally get back on the Instagrams. I'm, I'm getting us back into gear. So I'll yeah, let's just, do it. Yeah, pop up all the info <laughs> on there. So maybe if we decide, you know, in the next couple of days, I'll. But everybody know, so yeah. you can watch it. Let you know. So, yeah, I'm probably about to do a barrage of all the stuff we've reviewed since I've stepped away from social media. And, uh, you know, we'll do all that. So, anyways, I guess until next week, you know, just just you'll you'll see when the episode drops <laughs> otherwise because I'm not 100% sure. And then maybe check out uh, – w take a look and see. I might have gotten the stuff up on YouTube by this point. So, because yeah. from what I see, everything's recording properly and – Aside from the weird little audio issues we've had this week, I don't know. We've got to figure that out, but I, I'm not quite sure what was causing that. But I think everything's going to go pretty smoothly with posting this episode online. So check out our YouTube. It's Critically Aroused as well, so it should be easy to find. And uh, as usual, also, thank you so much for listening. Tell your friends and everybody. We'll get some more listeners. And if we do end up popping this up on YouTube, feel free to share it and all that fun stuff as well. And then we'll go ahead and give our special thanks. So, yeah, thanks to Aubrey well, Troutman. And our send off what songs? Else? Yeah, well, we'll do send off songs. I figured we'd do it after that. You know, I was going to okay. change Just it up. Just want to make sure yeah. we weren't no, going we like, uh, yeah. to be like, yeah. Click and stop record. I actually no, got some right. songs. That's a good point. Yeah. No, I had actually totally forgot no, about it. No, just one song. Yeah, you yeah, so if you didn't know, Fine. we have just one song. We have send off songs as well. Uh, so you can check out our playlist. I did totally forget about that this week for whatever reason. <laughs> um, but uh, we do have send off songs that we do. We have a send off song playlist on Spotify. I'm actually also working on this playlist for our YouTube. So you might be able to find it on there once things are fully up and running as well but if not there's st it's still on spotify we've done three songs every week this entire time so it's the 40 some odd episodes yeah, yeah it's it's getting to be a pretty solid uh solid playlist for sure so check that out and we'll all go ahead and rattle off some songs you guys want to go ahead yeah yeah
Uh, I'll start. Um, I have it's by Otis, and that's O H T I S. O H T I S. Yeah, yeah. Otis. Otis. Okay, okay. And the song is called Shotzi, which Shotzi. is kind of like Yahtzee, but Shotzi. S C H A T I. Sorry, T Z E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay. A weird name. Yeah, it is, it is a very interesting name. Strange. <laughs> like, hey, Shoddy. Want to play Yahtzee? Shotzi. Shotzi. Oh, Shotzi. That's my Shotzi. Nice. What um, song yeah, is this? Is it a rap song? No. No? No, it's like indie, poppy. Okay. No, okay. It's a fun little bopper. Nice. Yeah. All right. So what you got, Matt? Uh, the band is called Until I Wake. Okay. And the song is called Self Medicated. And this is a new like pop punk band that's sprung up last year. Okay. So they don't, I don't think they even have a CD. I think it's just an EP. Okay. And it's dope. Nice. Nice. All right. Well, I've added that as well. I hadn't heard of either of those, so I'll definitely check them out. Uh, I've been trying to decide what I was going to add. I, I looked earlier today when I was doing the playlist and then I just didn't fully decide. Um, so I guess what I'm going to do is this is kind of an interesting one. Uh, it, I'm going to do a song by Hobo Johnson. The song is called Typical Story. I'll let you guys hear a few seconds of it recently. Um, he's very much specific style. You either like the style or you don't, but it's it's kind of that talky, screamy, indie, uh, I don't even really know where to pinpoint talky, it. Talky, screamy. Yeah, yeah. But like, it's, it's good, yeah, though. I really like it. that one. This is good stuff. You'll have to check it out. He was <laughs> he kind of blew up a little bit a while, like at the very beginning of the TikTok situation. Okay. Like he, he got kind of a following and over the past year or so, there's like people that will release songs where they're like, this is what this song would sound like if Hobo Johnson did it. And, <laughs> you know, it's because it, it, it is. It's just like he's talking a lot of the time, but the music's really good. It's kind of this good indie vibe to it. But he's like, a lot of the time he's like telling a story and he's just like, one time there was a sock and I went down and, <laughs> you know, like it's just this weird, like, <laughs> you know, it, where he like elevates his tone, but the music in the background's really good. I like huh. the style. Like it's, it's good stuff. So. Anyways, check it out. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's typical story about Hobo Johnson. Both are all three songs have been added to the playlist, so check it out. But, Sweet. Yeah, and uh, so now we'll get on to the end yeah. of the episode. <laughs> but yeah, so we'll go ahead and give a special thanks to Aubrey Troutman. She did our logo, and then to David Troutman for editing our episodes and all that fun mm-hmm. stuff as well. And then to Kets of Music, which is K E T S A Kets of Music, who is our did our intro and outro song. And if you want to find us on Instagram, we're at Critically Aroused, and uh, we're uh, check us, you can check us out on our website as well. It's pretty cool. It's uh, at Critically Aroused dot fireside or fireside dot fm. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, you can find us there. And what's the YouTube? The YouTube, I think it's just Critically Aroused as well. I was able to yank up just our name on pretty much everything, so I did it back nice. away. But uh, so yeah, you'll find us there too. And and as usual, there's tons of links and everything in our show notes. There's all kinds of info in there. And to the to the, I, I will actually probably put if I get once the stuff's up on YouTube, the link for that'll be in there and stuff as well. So it'll have all that info in the show notes. But anyways, guys, until next week, it's been a blast. It was great to be back. It's been great <laughs> to do this for a whole friggin' year. Yeah. yeah. So uh, one year down, yeah, right? Here, here's to another fun year, guys. Yeah. That's not fucking 2020. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> all right, folks. Thanks a bunch. Love you guys. Thanks for listening. Thank Thanks. you. Later, guys. See you.